The following show has been classified by FM 104 as being unsuitable for those under 15 years of age. Built in the 15th century, Lep Castle is steeped in murder, bloodbath, and absolute horror. History tells us in the 1930s, workmen discovered cartloads of human remains in one of the castle's dungeons. The castle is haunted by reported sightings of ghosts and by a nasty spirit, the elemental, a half ghost, half human. This journey to Lep Castle is our most terrifying yet. The FM 104 phone show team, along with trained paranormal experts, will now take you on a journey into the unknown. We now go live to Adrian Kennedy and Jeremy Dixon. So sit tight, as this is the FM 104 Fright Night. Terrified already, and we haven't even started. Good evening. You're very welcome. This is FM 104's phone show. And a lot of you have been asking, where are you doing your program this year? And this year we decided not to tell you until tonight. Tonight we are broadcasting from Lep Castle, as you just heard from the introduction. And Lep Castle is in County Offaly, but just barely inside County Offaly. Uh, it's near Ross Cray in County Tipperary. It's about five or six miles from Ross Cray. This place is in the middle of nowhere. It sits on top of a hill. We're so much in the middle of nowhere, our mobile phones barely work. We've very, very limited broadband. And we're kind of cut off from the rest of the world. I'm here. Jeremy is here. Yes, I am. And we have a team of paranormal investigators that we're going to introduce you uh, to throughout the evening. Yes. Welcome, welcome to Lep Castle, by the way, everybody. Welcome. Now, um, Jeremy, this is our second time here. We were here a couple of weeks back. Under, um, under very different circumstances. It was during the day. And it yeah, was, it was and, and the place has a total, totally different feel about it during the daytime. Absolutely. As soon as the sun went down this evening when we arrived, it just got a, different, a completely different feeling. Um, now, I want you to just go outside the front door for a second, just to yeah. describe, because obviously we're very conscious that this is radio and... I want you to describe the outside of the building and uh, the outside of, the, of, the, of this castle. We're yeah, set, uh, set up, uh, there's already a photograph of uh, me up on Facebook, if you want to check out. We'll be putting up photographs regularly on fm104.ie and on our Facebook page. And um, we, we had hoped to put videos up, but unfortunately the broadband is so uh, weak uh, in this part of the country that we can't put videos up. So we do have videos already recorded, but they'll have to wait until tomorrow until we can put them up. But anyway. Yeah, I'm now, I'm now outside the castle. This castle, ladies and gentlemen, and you, as I said, you'll see the photographs up on the F104 website and on the F104 Facebook page all through the night. But this is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. And it, even down to the fact that the door of the castle is a big, squeaky, solid door that when you open it, and listen to the knock, the knocker on the door, even the... Like, this is the real deal. The castle is basically split into two parts. It's split into the part that's actually been lived in, and then to the left of it is, of course, the, the ruins of the castle, which are being renovated at the moment, um, and that's basically what they are there, ruins. But um, for most part, the castle is still intact. There's um, three floors, and there are three floors, Adrian, to the castle. There's the, um, the ground floor, which is where you're situated, um, where the studio is. Mm -hmm. Then up in the next room is the banquet room. And now... You listening, I can hear you go, there's nothing scary about a banquet room. Mm. Well, let me tell you this, there's something very scary about a banquet room, which we'll, we'll talk about a bit later on. Um, there's also what they call a red room in the, in the castle, which again is one of the most haunted parts of the, the castle. That's where a, a woman dressed in red uh, lives. She actually, the spirit actually resides in uh, this part of the castle. Um, we also have the room where the elemental uh, resides. The elemental is what we've been told by our psychics is it's not human, it's not beast, it's somewhere in between. Mm. Um, I'll be journeying into the room where the elemental uh, lives 
uh, a bit later on. Then there's also one of the one of the other places where the ghosts reside is it's sort of a balcony off the banquet room. Uh, we'll be doing experiments there. And finally, the um, the piece de resistance, as they say, of this castle, ladies and gentlemen. And the, the part of this castle that's made it so infamous is the Bloody Chapel. Now, even the name Bloody Chapel sends shivers up my spine. This is located at the top of the castle. Um, and this is the place where, um, I think back in the 1930s, if, if I'm, I stand corrected on that, but basically uh, workers found cartloads and cartloads of uh, human remains. Um, so that's at the top of the building. Um, so that, right, gives, now, that, that gives you an overview of, of what we're talking about. And in here. just a while, Jeremy's going to be taking you on a, a tour of this uh, building with our resident psychic, Louise Kings. The two of them are going to walk around uh, the building. Now, just to explain to our listeners what we have done already before we came on air is we had uh, what's described, what's called a grounding. And uh, basically what a grounding is, is it gets us all grounded, basically, um, and helps to protect us from anything that might be in this uh, building. So we've already done that in previous years. We've done our grounding live on air this year. We did it just before we came on air. Now, you're welcome to uh, text us throughout the programme. Uh, 53104 is our text number. If there's anything you hear during the programme, anything, any comments you want to make, 53104 is our uh, text number. I can see your texts here beside me. Um, but unfortunately, due to the location that we're at, we can't put up videos. We uh, hopefully will get some photographs up, but uh, do bear with us because the broadband coverage is very, very uh, weak where we are. So uh, at this moment, I can uh, see your uh, text. So that's something. Um, Jeremy sounds petrified already. It must be bitterly cold there. Wrap up well, says one of you uh, texting in already. And it is quite cold, I have to say. But uh, I want to introduce you to um, the owner of uh, Lep Castle, and his name is uh, Sean Ryan, and he joins me here in our uh, studio. Sean, good evening to you. How are you doing? Thank you very much indeed for firstly having us in uh, your home. Um, this is something that you're quite used to, people taking over your home like this. Well, at this stage, yes, I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, when did you originally uh, move, when did you originally get this place? Well, we bought it in 1991. Uh, it came up for sale then. Um, I suppose it was in the middle of a recession. Uh, there was nobody interested. Uh, they had enough troubles. So it was cheap. And um, what did I say? We were a lot younger and had loads of energy. <laughs> so we decided we'd have a go at it. Uh, and, oh, okay, so you, you saw this place. And, uh, I mean, even it, it's such an imposing building. What was going through your mind when you thought, let's buy that place? We just felt... Um, it, it, well, at the time, we felt it would be our only chance of ever getting our hands on one. Um, we always, Why, did you always want it on a, a, we, a castle? Kind of, it was always in the back of our minds, but never thought it would be possible. Mm -hmm. So the chance came, and so we, we decided we'd have a go at it. How much did you know about Lep Castle and its history before you actually bought it, or when you bought it? Well, quite a bit, because um, in my younger days... I went to college in Kennedy Castle over there. It was a, a training college, a forestry training college owned by the government. So we was passed by here on Fridays going for a pint to Ross Gray and that. So we knew, uh, I often called in here. Mm -hmm. So we knew quite a bit about it. And knowing what you must have known about it, that didn't turn you off wanting to get your hands on it? Not really, no, no. I was brought up... In my young days, a lot of my time with my grandmother in a big old house, and I was—I always felt there was something going on there. Now, when I get, as I get older, I'm just wondering was it just a boyish <laughs> time? Was I, was I making things up or not? But so, tell me about the last twenty years. You've been living here for the last twenty years. I know you've brought up uh, your your daughter lived here. Um, she doesn't mm. live here anymore, is that right? Oh, she does. Oh, but she does. Yeah, well, when she's at home. When she's <laughs> at home. Okay, yeah. now. So she's grown up here since she was quite young. How did she, during her childhood years, cope with living in such a, an imposing building? Well, the thing is, is um, you, you get used to the space around you. And it, it gets smaller as you go along, I suppose, to the eye. So, but, like, um, we're only living in it about 10 years. We were in the gatehouse up to then because it was a total, every, the whole lot was a total ruin. So I, I'd been restoring it all the time. Tell me about the sort of experiences then that you've personally had in, I, I, and as I mentioned to you earlier on, this isn't unusual for you to have crews of people checking the place out for, um, 
for ghosts and whatever. Um, you've had uh, television crews down here. You've you've a radio station here tonight. Tell me about the the experiences that you've had yourself. Well, I suppose uh, um, I should say in the beginning that we've never felt threatened by any of us. Like they've never interfered with us or made life difficult. They basically let us know they're here. And they do that in many ways, I suppose. They, we hear them. Um, we tend to hear them at night time, I suppose. But it's not that it's an, only a night time thing. It's, uh, it's so quiet here at night. And when you say you hear them at night time, what do you hear? We hear like people walking around, doors open, opening and closing. Another thing uh, we experience is um, it would be like a, a crowd of people in another room all talking, but you can't just make anything out. Uh, the unusual thing about that too is, we say, if you heard it, we say, over there, and you go there, you, it's not there. You're never at it. It's always someplace else. And I should say about the footsteps and that, the, it doesn't seem to be on the floors or the floor levels that we have now, nor are the doors are opening and closing our doors. So there must have been different levels. Like the house, the castle is quite an old castle, so. Uh, I'm sure there are many changes made down through the centuries. Okay, but you say you, you've never felt threatened. Have you ever felt scared? Never felt scared. It was different in the beginning, there's no <laughs> doubt about so. it. Because I spent every hour that God sent down here, winter and summer, all hours of the night working. And in the beginning, even just by candlelight, we had no electricity or anything here. So um, I, I used to get what, what we kind of call copycat sounds. When you'd be doing, so, say you were sawing a piece of wood or something like that, and sometime later you, you'd hear that sound back. And in the beginning it was a bit different, but very quickly we felt, uh, you know, that it was quite friendly. We, we didn't feel threatened by it anyway, you know. And never during, during your 20 years uh, of owning this place has anything ever happened that scared the living daylights out of you? No, not really, no. Even the, the likes of copycat sounds, that didn't freak you out? No, as I said, it was different. There was no doubt about <laughs> it. But, but, um, and does that still happen? Oh, it does, yes. The, uh, I suppose the one thing that happened that took my daughter Kira back a small bit is just coming out here from our kitchen now. Um, there's, see, there's a lady down here that brushes off people, touches people. And but she started getting finger pokes about eight years ago. And that took her, took her back a little bit. She's 20 now and she runs in and out there. So she, you know. she does get a... She still... She does get a bit freaked out. A, a, a bit, but she's... How will I say? Um, she's used to it now, too. Even though she still runs in and out there a bit. She doesn't like the physical bit of it, like, you know. But. Which part of the, of the building um, do you feel has, the, has the, the strongest presence, for want of a better word? But well, it's difficult to say, I suppose. Like, most of our experiences are down here because basically we spend most of our time here. Uh, the upper hall, the, the chapel, we do, but we don't be up there that long. You know, that often, I mean, especially at night time, uh, during the day when people come to visit and that, we, we take people up there okay. Um, most of our time, or most of the reason why I go up there is to do work uh, clearing gutters and stop the water from coming in and things like that. And just finally, uh, Sean, it, 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 you say you bought it when you were a bit younger. Is is it still an awful lot of work? Is it a daily chore to keep oh, on top is, of the place? Yes, indeed. But we've slowed down a good bit now. We have enough space to live. And a good bit of time goes, you know, at maintenance now as well. That takes up a good bit of time. So, but as I said, we have enough space to live and the madness is over. The mad rush is over. All right, well, we, uh, I promise you our crew will leave the places they found it this evening. That's and fine. We Good really mo- appreciate you uh, having us in your home most uh, this welcome. evening, Sean. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed. Okay. That is uh, Sean Ryan, who is the owner of uh, Lep Castle, in, uh, which is where we are broadcasting from tonight. You're listening to FM 104's phone show. This is our Fright Night, broadcasting live from Lep Castle in County Offaly, just inside the border of County Offaly. If you're looking us up on the map, you'll, uh, if you find Ross Crane Tipperary, we're just a couple of mi- miles down the road. Now, after the break, Jeremy is going to start his walk around of Lep Castle, taking you room by room and telling us how he feels and how Louise, our resident psychic, feels as they enter all of the different rooms around this house. Live 
via satellite tonight. This is FM 104's phone show. Sit tight. Our paranormal investigation continues just after the break. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. The FM 104 phone show with QuoteDevil.ie saving you money on home, car and van insurance. FM 104. Live from the most haunted castle in Europe. This is the FM 104 phone show Fright Night at Lep Castle. We now return to our paranormal investigation. Now you're very welcome back. This is Adrian Kennedy with you. Live from Lep Castle in uh, County Offaly. Now if you want to Google this place, you will find out uh, stuff that, well, I don't even want to repeat because... It scares the living daylights out of me. And uh, uh, as we speak, I'm sitting now in a studio um, on my own with uh, Graeme Harkness, who is an archaeologist and historian, who's going to be telling us a little bit about um, this building. And uh, Graeme, good evening to you. Evening, Adrian. How are you doing? I'm Grant. Oh, hang on. Graeme is there. There you are now. That's e- Grant. Evening, Adrian. How are you? Grant, thanks, Graeme. Now, what we're going to do here is uh, Jeremy should be here. Yes, I'm there here. we are. Okay. And Jeremy and Louise Kings, our resident psychic, are going to bring us on a guided tour of this building. And as they're bringing us on the guided tour, you're going to try and explain to us what the rooms are and what the significance are of, uh, of, of these rooms. Now, just before they set off on, the, on their, their tour, um, Graham, we spoke with Sean, the owner of the place, a moment ago, and he's in this building uh, 20 years. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot more to the history of this place than just 20 years. Oh, yeah, a lot, hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, it goes back to the 15th century. Um, was built by the O'Bannons, an old Irish clan. So the building we're in at the moment, it's a square castle. You see them, there's about 5,000 of them left in Ireland at the moment. They're called tower houses. They came in with the Anglo-Normans after about the you know, 10, 1100s. And, and then as the Irish chieftains took over the country in the Midlands, they started to adopt these fortified houses for themselves. Previously, they would have lived in Cranogues or ring forts. Nowadays, uh, well, at the time, um, when the Irish took over, um, when they started building these places, um, it, it, it had a lot of rivalry would start between the different clans. In this case, the O'Bannons, who built it. And only 15 years later, in about 1515, the O'Carrolls, another rival clan from the area, fought in battle for this building a number of times. They failed over and over, but on the third or fourth attempt, they actually took the building. There was a huge loss of life. And the building kept changing hands then throughout families, right through the 1500s, 1600s, all the way up, right until nearly the 1700s. Um, many battles were fought. As, fa- as it goes on and on, a lot of people were tortured here. There's a lot of stories of torture. Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. What makes this reputedly one of the most... I mean, I, I'm, almost, I'm almost shocked by how relaxed uh, Sean was. He lives in this <laughs> yeah, place. Yeah. Um, this is reputed to be one of the most haunted places in Europe, not just Ireland, in Europe. And it really is. There's a real feeling about the area and the landscape. I mean, where it sits, it's very prominent. So it gives you a, f- a I mean, feeling this, when you this get This to is it. a castle sitting on top, on top of the hill. Of the hill. You can mm. see it from miles around. It's a very imposing building as well, especially with everything else in the area is so nice. When you get close to the building, you get a real heavy feel around it. And I think that's got to do with, you know, people know the history, the battles around the place. And once you get there, you, you feel that in you, whether you're a medium or not. It, it's got that oppressive feel to it. And now, and even as late as the day 1911, around about, around about the start of the 20th century, the castle was burnt down. There was a lot, a lot of, even as late as that, uh, when they were re- renovating the castle, they found a, a clock watch um, uh, in a pile of bones, and the watch dated from the 1850s, which is terrifying in itself that people were still being killed here reputedly right up until the middle of the 19th century. So when you think of these things when you come into the castle, it, it really feels... That's you, what gives it that heavy feeling. hundreds of years of, 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 of murder. All right, but well we're going to set... Um, now, Jeremy, do I have you uh, there? Yes, that's okay. right. Um, now, yourself and Louise are going to... We're leaving the main room um, and heading... Because this castle is it's quite vast, actually, uh, in size. So we're now leaving uh, the comfort of uh, the studio, where the studio is set up. And um, we're going up here. Now, the reason I have uh, Louise with me, obviously, is because there's certain things that I may not sense that, that, she, that she will sense, and, and vice versa. I mean, normally when I do these things, I do pick up, pick up on, um, on different feelings and stuff like that. So we're going to make our way up the, up the stairs. Sorry, Louise, I just have to turn this torch on. Just bear with me for one second. Now... 
as I said, we're just walking up. It's like a, um, it's like a, a tower um, with stairs going around and around and around. And uh, Louise, if you, um, are you okay, by the way? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm right behind you. Yeah, if you feel anything at any at any stage, just just let me know. These walls are solid, solid walls. And you're offline, just let you know. Yeah. Now, I believe, Louise, this is the first room we're going into, is that right? This is the, the banquet room. Okay, Adrian, we've just... Yeah, this, I think, yeah, this is the banquet room. It's just a big solid door in the banquet room. Now, just to describe this visually, and I think, as I said, we do have photographs up at this stage on, on the F104 uh, website at the moment. But just to describe the banquet room, it's a, it's a large, large room. Can with a, I can feel my energy yeah, shifting, yeah. Me. Tell me what you can feel now. You look a bit, hang on, just stand a bit more solid. Why? I don't know. You were flitting there a little bit. Well, tell me what you're feeling. Okay, the energy up here is much, much stronger. Um, I have been up here earlier on today. I am, um, excuse me if my voice goes, I am, um, there's a very, very strong female presence looking at me. I am. Um, looking at you from where? From where? There. Yeah, no, Adrian, this is the. This is the uh, she was here earlier. Yeah, this is the part of the, the banquet room, up in the banquet room, off the banquet room, and we will go up there is supposedly one of the most haunted parts of the castle and it's like a i suppose it's a loft or something like that is it it's a loft it's, kind of like, it's a mini loft mini mezzanine level i mean it doesn't the structure doesn't look as if it's safe enough to sleep in yeah. but i think it's what did you call that the gallery sort of a gallery yeah, yeah it's, loft it's, yeah it's kind of sort of a gallery when i was here earlier today with um sandra earlier we picked up on two women but now at the moment it's just this this one female that's uh looking at me. You know, it's interesting that you say that because as soon as I came into the room, obviously it's just the two of us here, but as soon as I came into the room, it did feel as though there was someone else. But there's a real feminine presence here, right now. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that obviously can change later on, but right now it feels very, very feminine. She's an interesting uh, character. Can you time. see her now or where, where is she? She's standing exactly right there. She's just well, looking. Um, is she old or is she? I would say, I would say early 30s. Okay, just but I'm saying early 30s, our time. Obviously, in their time, they did look older. But okay. I would say in our time now, I would say kind of early 30s. She's a very, very strong energy. She's aware of who, what's going on. Okay. Does, does um, she mean us harm? No, I, I don't, not her particularly, even though I think that she may be the one that people think means an awful lot of harm. I, um, she's very aware of her looks, so she's very aware of other women that kind of come in here. I get the feeling, you know, if you're in a nightclub, and a really good looking girl kind of comes in yeah. and it's kind of checking her out. Do you know what I mean? That she'd be very aware of other uh, okay. female sort of here. There's, um, de there's definitely a feeling in this room that, that we're not alone. Um, here's another question because I know we will leave the banquet room and we will head up. Sorry, why are you looking over your shoulder there? Because over here as well, behind me, there's... Um, there's uh, I don't know, just get out. I'm getting a pull. Do you know what I mean? You've been drawn towards the corner. This is the corner of the banquet room, Adrian. I'm interested in her. Um, okay, the question I was going to ask you is we will leave the banquet room at some stage and we'll head up towards... towards now before, before you leave there, I just want yeah. to find out from... Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Adrian. I just, yeah, well, wa I just want to find out from Graham here a little bit about uh, the, the, the banquet room, which is directly above our heads here. Um, yeah, it's right above us, Adrian. It's on the first floor of the building. So it would have been the banquet room, so where, where the local chieftain would have entertained you know, cook big feasts for the locals. Now, there's a few, there's a few stories, what, actually listening in there, what Louise is, is, is getting on. Now, I've investigated this place a few times before. And uh, one of the stories here is that a, a young woman, actually quite similar to what Louise has described, um, was, was very interested in the occult and, uh, and brought something into this building in the past. Um, and, and previous investigations on everyone I've been here, that room, um, someone has picked up on a female figure in that area. And Louise, can you describe to me what, what feeling you're after getting there? What feeling have you got there, Louise? Well, just while uh, Graham was talking there, I was just saying to um, Jeremy that I was picking up on a second female. Again, this lady was here earlier today, and these women are so opposites of one another. You've got one, and one is very, how do I say it? She's got a very strong sexual energy. She's very overt with it. The second one is the complete opposite, and... In a way, I was kind of shown like a chastity belt. Now, I'm not saying she's wearing one, but just see the, you know, the opposites between the two women. They don't seem to collide, though, funny enough, even though they're, that they're both in. That's what I was saying, that the, 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 the feeling up here is very, very feminine. 
Um, it's also strange because um, you know parts of this castle are very cold. I was very cold walking up, but this room there's a there's a warmth in this room. There is, and I think that's what that's what I was saying about the you know the feminine presence. I think we're going to be doing a séance here uh, later on, which should be very very interesting as to as to what's going on. But see over there, down there in that archway, there's also something else looking at us. I can't quite make out what it is. I, I can see. Okay, eyes, can, can, can we walk down it. towards the archway? Yeah. Okay, once again, Adrian, this is still in the, the main banquet room, in the corner of the banquet room. Mm -hmm. this, no, there's some, there is something there in is the corner there. there. Go on, I'm going to push you down. <laughs> okay, so this is the archway. Oh my god, now that's after scaring me. The crucifix on the wall there. Why would he, why would he put a crucifix on that particular wall? This is a large, a large crucifix. I'm not quite sure about that one, but if you look around, there's... Um, there's so many different statues. You've got Buddha statues. You've even got a little witch statue down there. We see the witch. Oh, we see the witch statue. Yeah. Um, some Native Indian statues. It's very eclectic. Okay. Well, can we walk? Feel the difference of the energy here. Just even as you walk across these steps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, we're on right under the gallery right now. Um, but again, completely different. If you, I want you to use your hand and just kind of push. Okay. okay. Just bear with me for one moment, Adrian. Uh, what do you want me to do? Just see how you can. Do you know what I mean? See the well. thickness. Wow. Okay. That's just using your own hand. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are you sensing there? Are you sensing masculine? Are you sensing feminine? Feminine. Okay. Yeah. Adrian, but I. Can I just say something to you? Yeah. She's looking right down at you now. You're actually sensing. She's, she's looking at just, me. Yeah. She's right above us. Jesus. Okay. That is she's after. Yeah, oh, she's interested. She's as That's interested in us as we are in her. Sorry, can, sorry, any. Louise. How far away from me is she? She's just above, but you're sensing her here. Okay. Yeah. She's just above you. I can, I can sense that this, you know, and Adrian, I know, do you know that feeling when someone's looking at you, even though you're not looking at them? Yes. I'm after feeling just a, a shiver going all over my body. How's the top of your head feeling? I have a hat on my head, so. Okay. <laughs> Why is she doing something? I have a headache. I'm just getting a sense of a pull from the, the crown chakra area. So she's... She's interested. She's just watching us. Okay, she's does, she, doing does she mean us any harm? Not her. The other one, I'm not quite sure. And she, Sorry, she's, look, she's looking at me and not at you. No, she's looking at you. The other one was more interested in me. This one is more interested in you. Now, Graeme, can I, can I just ask Graeme? And I want to just Graeme is down here with me in the studio. Sure. What what are they feel? What are they witnessing there? What what are they feeling? Uh, it's, it's hard to say, really. I mean, it's still this energy. What Louise was saying initially, I mean, the, the sexual energy of the woman. Again, that's something a lot of people have felt up there. Now, when I've been here before, people who are mediums and people who aren't mediums, they've all kind of picked up on that. And I think that's kind of what they're getting there um, as they're going along. Now, the cold as well that's happening up there, I think that's, the, it could be the starting off of something. But again, we are in a cold building. Jeremy's wearing a hat as well, you know. And, and Jeremy, as, as a lay person, what are you feeling? No, I am feeling, this, this sounds hard to explain, but I am feeling an energy there. And I'm feeling definitely that there's, and I felt it before Louise even said it, there's, there, there's someone else with us here, there's eyes in the building. Now it has to be said as well, and I forgot about this, there's actually an infrared camera set up here as well, um, and the ghost hunters are um, monitoring this, so later on we'll be able to go back over this footage and see... And so, did you hear that noise? Yeah. Sorry, bear with me a second. Where did that come from? Down there in that corridor. I thought it came from behind us actually. No, but I was about to point over there. I was going to go to that in a second, but the noise came from over there, but there's nothing down there. There's nothing so down there? Uh, no, it's nothing down there. Should we walk down to the archway? Yeah. Okay, we're walking down. Let me just turn on my torch. Over there as well. it, just, it just needs to be pointed out, Adrian, as well, that obviously these photographs that will be posted up um, because of the flash, it will look bright. But I can tell you now, this is just, this room is candlelit at the moment. So we're going to walk. We're going to walk under the archway. Is she, Louise, is she still standing here looking at us? Mm -hmm. She is. Yeah, but this is, I'm bringing you to something else now. You're bringing me to something else. <sighs> As I that second. This is more masculine. Can you feel that? Stomach. I'm not feeling anything just, okay. just yet now. Just kind of, just somewhere along here. Oh, do you feel that, that cold burst of air yeah. there? It's just a line, and there's no obviously places like this would have, you know, incredible drafts. It's just a line kind of came right yeah. between the two of us. And what's, what's a very masculine uh, sense of somebody here, uh, wearing very very long clothes. His face isn't showing because he doesn't. He's 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 either looking down or his face is covered, but I can't see his face. But he is wearing something very very almost floor length. 
Okay. What's behind that door, um, by the way? I have no idea. I okay. think that's private residence. I think that's part of their private residence. We haven't been there. Though. Really? So what will I'm I? Not quite sure what, what this Just was. opening the door here. Okay, okay, we leave that door closed. Okay. But this is the door you would walk. Okay, what okay. Was, okay, Adrian, we just need to... I'm sorry for taking up too much of your time now, but we just need to investigate. There, there was definitely a noise coming from... Let me just walk up these stairs again. I don't know if you can hear the, even the creak of the floorboards. Are you still there, Adrian? Yeah, now what room are you in now? We're still in the banquet room. We're just walking over the... In in the other corner of the banquet room, um, there's a large wooden chest down there. A noise did come from this corner. Okay, can you now? Right now, I can feel like I need to throw up. Do, do you know what I mean? Um, now, from what I know, I think this is a, was a a place where people were poisoned, and I can really feel that sense of wanting to sort of throw up. Do you know what I mean? Like seriously. Well, Adrian, thing. can you confirm that with a, with a historian? Uh, did people get sick in this room? Well, Graham. Yeah, I mean, there is stories, not particularly of this castle, but it was a common period at the thing at the time to do was to poison enemies, invite them in and then poison them. So uh, while I haven't heard, Louise, anything in particular about th that happening in this castle, it wouldn't be entirely uncommon for it to have happened. So it may have happened and not been recorded. So you might be picking up on something that's happened in the past that uh, not a lot of people would have known about. Okay, so where to next? Okay, well, we're, I think, uh, Louise, are we safe to leave the banquet room? Or Yeah, sorry, uh, Louise wants to talk to you there. Can you hear that? It's like whispering. I know I'm whispering now, but can you hear it? It's like whispering. It's like a low-level whisper in the air. It's like another conversation, it's not us. No, Adrian, I just want to ask, is there anybody... Uh, I know everybody is uh, congregated down towards the, uh, the studio, uh, the setup studio. Is there anybody talking there whispering? Nope, I even had my microphone switched off. Can you hear it? It's like a murmur. I'm hearing... I mean, Sean said earlier on that... Yeah, I can hear something. And once again, for uh, those of you listening at home, if you do hear uh, anything that maybe we're not hearing, uh, or feeling anything that maybe we're not feeling... Sorry, sorry, Louise, are you okay? It just sounds like somebody's... Pr it's, it's, it's not chant... Either it's praying or something. It's either praying or it's chanting, because it has a... Um, a rhythm to it. Do, do you know what I mean? It's being repeated, repeated, repeated. Yeah, this, so this, it's not this, like a general conversation between people. Okay, we make our way up to the loft. Up there? Up there. You want to go up there? I'll go up there on my own if you want. No, no, I'll go up there with you. Go okay. Up. Okay, we're, we're leaving the banquet room. Uh, and I think, Adrian, I'll be right in saying we're returning to the banquet room a bit later on um, to do a seance. Is that correct? That's the plan, yeah, just after 10 o'clock. Sorry, yeah, there is, there is. There's a tapestry on the wall, but it looks, it sounds like somebody's knocking on it, but the, it, it is. Let me just check. Yeah, this, is a, this is a wall behind us here with a big tapestry on it. It's a solid wall. Yeah, with a tapestry on it. Someone's banging on that wall. It sounded like, like a knock, as if there was a door. You would assume there was a door behind it, but there's no door. It's a solid wall. <sighs> okay, we're leaving the, uh, the banquet room. And we're making our way just off the banquet room is um is the no I'm trying to remember. It's is it this left? No, we're up again, we're up again. Now to my to my uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> to my right earlier and Adrian, you got a laugh out of this earlier on. Earlier uh, oh Jesus. Er, earlier on tonight when we were checking out the castle, I went into Keith and Angie, um, our ghost hunters. And they sent you into this... Into this room called the, the element, Elemental. The yeah. Elemental Room. This is where the... I don't know if Keith is there. Maybe he can explain to you or, or the historian can explain what the Elemental is. Keith, come over here for one second because this is the room that uh, Jeremy nearly jumped out of his skin earlier on when we were uh, exploring this building. Uh, what is this Elemental Room that you brought us into earlier on? <laughs> It's a tiny room, which which where the, the, the hot water tank is, um, but reputedly this is this is where the the spirit known known as the elemental resides. So the elemental is a is a uh, did you hear that non-human 
but non-animal yeah. figure. Sorry, which, sorry, agent, to cut across it. Did you, you, I don't know. I don't know if you heard that noise. Uh, has appeared here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Go on, Jeremy. Sorry, I don't know if you heard that. Yeah. There's nobody. There's nobody above us. I don't know if you picked this up on the radio. Maybe people listening at home picked this up. There's nobody above us. But I distinctly heard a woman's voice or a girl's voice upstairs. Is that what you heard or what did you? It was kind of like a scream. Yeah. yeah. And a scratch. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you put your nails on a mirror. Or a board, yeah. sorry, a board, that kind of a speech. No, I just want to say, above us in the castle, there is nobody up there. There's literally nobody up there in the bloody chapel. And literally, as you were talking there, there was a, there was a scream from, from upstairs. That's the gallery. That's the gallery. Yeah, directly up over the elemental room is the gallery, which overlooks the banqueting room. Okay, so what? Okay, should we, should we go into the elemental room or... Now, sorry, I just want to point out that I did get scared in here earlier on, but the reason I got scared was because... I was standing in the elemental room and I felt this scratching on my back and I turned around and it was a bat. He wasn't um, scratching your back either. He was scratching my back. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing. I can handle ghosts, but I can't handle bats. Um, so we go in as far as we can go um, without losing uh, the signal. Okay, Louise. First of all, Louise, do you believe in elementals? or? Yeah. Now, there, there are various different forms of elementals. I mean, people know of the earth, air, fire, water elementals, but then the other elementals are those that are, are manifested or conjured, and it depends on the method that they're basically kind of put together as to what way they sort of turn out and their strengths. Do, do you know what I mean? So um, There's a feeling in here, though, there definitely is not. I ran out of here. <laughs> I'm surprised I've come in this close. Partly was because of the bat, but again, feel how the energy completely changes as soon as we go in here. It's sure, very, very sure. different. It's incredibly thick. Um, and Keith, and sorry, it's probably uh, the place I feel the least safe. Keith, you, uh, we, we didn't even know about this room earlier on. Uh, no. so this is where this elemental resides, and apparently, yes. At any time. Um, I'll go in with you if you really want. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if the signal will. Let me just walk in. Hey, no, you? I'm losing you going in there. Okay, we're, ha we're halfway in, which is probably probably not a bad thing. It's a yeah, it's a good thing. Okay, well, well you finish off with Keith. We're going to walk up towards the uh, the loft, um, just off the banquet room. Okay, and I'll come back to you in, in, in just. Sorry, Keith. The the yeah. the the, the, uh, yeah. the elemental is is. I, I'm trying to get it into well, my head. It's, it's it's. I mean, the the concept of the animal is a little bit like Satan, a, a demon. Um, it's it's a a figure that that has no human form. Now, in in all our research and all our investigation, we've never ever picked up any ev real evidence of um, such an entity. Um, and until we pick up evidence, then we 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 will assume that it doesn't exist. All right, we're uh, going to take a very quick break now. If you've just joined us, you're listening to FM 104's phone show. We're broadcasting live tonight from Lepp Castle in County Offaly, just a couple of miles from uh, Ross Cray in County Tipperary. Um, and we're only getting started. We're with you live via satellite tonight, of all things, and uh, we'll continue with uh, the walkabout with Jeremy and Louise straight after the break when the phone show continues. Our journey continues. Do you dare to join us? Yes. We're back just after the break. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. The terror, the fear, the unknown. Live from Lepp Castle, the FM 104 phone show Fright Night. We now return to our paranormal investigation. And you're very welcome back. This is Adrian Kennedy with you tonight. If you want to text in comments, please feel free to do so. 53104 is our text number. Let me read out um, some of your texts that have been coming in in the last while. My radio has been working all day since the programme started. It's breaking up and uh, during the ads, it's perfect. What's that all about? Well, it sounds perfect from where we are. Um, Adrian, I heard a moan as soon as you finished talking about the gallery. It sounded like a female, says uh, Olive. I heard a low growl when uh, Jeremy was in the element room, says uh, Siobhan. Um, I heard some moaning in the background, uh, says another texter. Adrian, I can hear this kind of interference, um, but it only happens when they see ghosts, says uh, Dale. I want to go back to um, Jeremy now. Where are you? We're just in the, the loft area, um, which is above the banquet room. And I'm just going to, Louise, if you just step down there first, 
and I'm going to close the door um, behind us. Okay, so... Okay, we're now in the loft. There's just a there's just a bed here basically in the in the loft. This is where nearly every psychic that ever comes down here to do uh, experiments and stuff says is just and they're oh my god, there's there's something here, isn't there? There it is, yeah. Again, you can pick up on that feminine presence. One of them, there's two of them, but one in particular I don't like, and I'll tell you why. It's because it's like she interferes with your thoughts. There's thoughts going through my mind that are not my own. Do you know what I mean? I have to try and kind of block her out. In a way, it's like, I'm not saying she's playing games, but she's, in, she's interfering. She's well aware of what she's doing. Um, just during the ad break as well, um, I spoke to you a little bit earlier about the little girl that I picked up on. Uh, myself and Sandra picked up on her. And she keeps, it's like she wants to grab you by the hand, she wants to show you something. And yet there's no children feeling here at all. And no, yes, no. I got her very, very strongly. Really pretty little girl, uh, very, very strongly. And it, it's kind of like she got excited, there's somebody here to play with me. But I had to kind of tell her, I'm not here to play with you. Did you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, uh, the, the background to that story is, and we, we, I think we leave here, this is it's not a nice place. The background to that story, Adrian... Uh, uh, Jeremy, when you say it's not, not, not a nice place, I need you to describe there's, that to me because... There's just not a nice, there's not a nice feeling here. It's, it's a, an unwelcome feeling. The bizarre thing is, is that there's a bed made up here. Someone has obviously slept here uh, at some stage. Um, but no, there's definitely not a nice feeling. Um... Yeah, there's a noise coming from that corner. Yeah, go yeah. down there. It's funny where they go. They go to the opposite to where we are. It's like they want to view us. Doing, they're they're quite interested in us. Yeah. Okay. Let's 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 get out of here. Let's go to the, the red room. Sorry, Adrian. I was just saying about, of course, uh, tragically, uh, many hundreds of years ago, we believe uh, a young girl fell from the tower here to her death, and her and her sister, the spirit of her and her sister, now reside uh, in the tower. So we're now we're now making our way nearly to the top of the castle, um, and we are going into the uh, into the red room. Now, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Yep. This is. Um, I've no idea. I didn't even know this room existed. We sit down in the yeah. corner. I didn't even know this room existed until earlier on. Um, why is it called the red? Do you know the reason why it's called the red room? No, I just know. One of the lads, when they're showing us around, they just call the red room. And it's an unusual uh, name to give it because it, it's smaller than an understairs bathroom. It's tiny. But the, if I was here earlier on today and the feeling was very, very different to what it is right well, what now. What are you sensing in here? Um, well, earlier on, it, it, was, it was a much more warm thing. We p both picked up on this guy. We were able to describe him. Um, he had something to do with the, the kitchens. But right now, it's changed again. In this room, this room is basically, and I think we're going to be conducting an experiment here a bit later on, Adrian, if I'm correct. But um, this room is, it's a tiny little, like a, like under the stairs in, in an old house, just with a tiny little window in the in the corner. Um, and again, this this room should be freezing cold, but it's not. It's not. It should be, but it's not. Adrian, this is... It's actually very, very warm, yeah, in comparison to where we've just been, yeah, this which is heated. So is it, 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 this what, is you, very, what are you saying? Warm. It's like going into... Very, very different. Um, from the uh, from an ice cold an fridge into a warm yeah, room. Yeah, it's a warm corner room. almost. Yeah. I think one of well, I, I don't want to give too much away, but we are going to be uh, we're going to be placing somebody in, in this room later on on their own. I, I imagine, isn't that right, Adrian? Yeah, we we have to find somebody who's prepared to uh, prepared to go in there. Okay, the last the last step of our, of our journey we're going to make um, is right up to the top of the. T Sorry, can you still pick me up there? I can hear you perfectly. It's actually, I, 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 sometimes I'm in shock that you can pick up a microphone in the middle of a, a castle tower, you know what I mean? It just seems bizarre. Um, but we're making our way up to the uh, what's known as the Bloody Chapel. Now, to describe this, again, photographs are on the uh, FM104 website and on the FM104 Facebook page. To describe the Bloody Chapel, it's, it's kind of like uh, the Hellfire Club from, from last year. In that it's, it's a big open, uh, galvanised... Um, roof on the top. Sorry, can you get me, Adrian? I can, yeah. Sorry, I thought you were gone. Um, just an old, old church. And this... Well, obviously it's cold up here now because there's no windows in the place and the, the wind is blowing through it. Um, Louise, what have you seen? <laughs> I just I just looked over at Louise there and there's a look of uh, of shock or horror on her face. 
because that's what amazed me about this place is the duality of everything. And again, I go, I get pulled from being empathic to what's actually happened here, as in the victims that were here, to almost so, the hatred that I would have for those that caused it, because it's like the senses both here. If you look over there, the difference of the energy from both, and you get that smell of, I know it sounds strange, but like hot blood. And I know it's called the Bloody Chapel, and it's, no, it's not just because the name's gone into my mind, you can get that smell. Just by by like the way, Jeremy, just... It's kind of like overwhelming. And yeah, sorry, sorry, Adrian, go ahead. There's a photograph uh, we've put up on our Facebook page, uh, and I'm just after seeing this for the very first time, right? Yeah. Uh, now, you can check this out. If you're not already um, a follower on our Facebook page, uh, you just log on to uh, find FM 104 on Facebook and click like. But this photograph is a photograph taken of me earlier on this evening up in the... In the bloody uh, chapel. Up exactly where you are now, right? Yeah. And it looks like, uh, on the picture, the most bizarre picture I've ever seen... Because I'm, I'm a, yeah, I, I've actually seen. I saw this. This is a, this yeah. is a picture, um, and it, it looks look, like it's snowing. It looks it? like it's snowing. Yeah, yeah. but it, it obviously wasn't snowing. Um, there was no rain. There's, I mean, it, there's a roof on on top, and it look. Uh, people are describing yeah, it. Like it snow on the ground, people yeah. are describing it as uh, as orbs, or, but it's definitely not snow. Louise, uh, you've seen this photograph. Are they orbs? And it's not rain. No, it couldn't be rain because there's a... There's a roof on the... Uh, it was taken here. It was taken up here. Oh. Now, you can check out this um, photograph for yourself. This is a bizarre photograph. To, to see, are they just dust particles? Yeah, they could be dust or particles or they could be But sure, you never get dust particles in a photograph like that. I've never seen anything not like many, this. Not that many. It's it, just, it, you know, it looks like it's... Um, that's it, not to say there's none in it. Um, but the picture would really have to be expanded. Probably. I mean, right over your head, Adrian, there's a very, very large orb. Yes, and I'm, I'm looking at it now and it's... Maybe somebody can explain uh, this particular photograph. This is on our Facebook page. You can check it out right now. Uh, you just uh, find FM 104 on Facebook and you'll see the picture for yourself. But anyway, sorry, that's where you are right now. The I photograph am. of me that's up on Facebook now is where you're standing. Okay, I'm in the bloody chapel. And again, just to put this into uh, context. Oh my God, it's cold up here. It's absolutely... This is... Although the roof is covered with, with galvanised iron, uh, the windows are, are open. It is. It's like being back in the Hellfire Club. And so many deaths uh, took place here, didn't they, Louise? I mean, this was just... Many, 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 many. And you really get that sense when you're in here. You get that sense of helplessness and pleading for mercy more than anything else. It's really... But when I stand here, it's kind of like this place didn't look like this. These levels are all wrong. And I spoke to Graham, you know, the historian, because I said that entrance there just didn't feel right, that this is the way they came. And he said, no, that came later because there was a fire here. But the oblique, which is over there, which you have very... very well, I did. I, ch I changed this my mind. Where? Sorry, what's this? Now, over in the corner of the bloody chapel where we're walking towards is... Oh, sorry, I'm just looking at that. I'm looking at the window here at the top of the tower. Down onto the, onto the castle ruins. Look at that. And the, the, the peculiar thing about tonight, Jeremy, is while it's a, a, yeah. very, a, a very cold night, it's extremely calm. It is very calm. There's, uh, I mean, there's a candle, there's a candle lighting up here, and um, it's, it's, it hasn't gone out, so that will tell you how calm it is. Um, now, to, to the, to, we're just standing over it here. The, what, what's this called, Louise? There's a big, there's a drop of about. Let me just see. There's a drop of about eight foot down into the. Is this the dungeon? This is where they had the, um, the, the spikes, literally coming up out of the ground, where people were thrown off here. Okay, the lucky ones died. Those that didn't, obviously, were injured, but they were never taken out. They were impaled on the they spike. They were impaled, and you can almost get that sort of sense, you know, the sense of fear, the sense of pleading for mercy. And I think death would have been, the, you know, for some of them would have been the, the kind of thing. There's, there's something, the there's, feeling sorry, down. there's something down there. There is some, I'm, uh, earlier on, I looked down and I felt okay, but right now I don't want to look down, I kind of feel something's no, going to come up. No, I don't want to look down either. No, I know earlier on, Adrian, I said I'd go down, there's a, there's a ladder going down into it, I'm just... Okay, if you, if you, sorry, if you hold the torch, Louise, I'm going to look, I'm going to look down. Just bear with me there. I'm just going to... Oh, my God. I'm basically, I'm staring into the abyss here because I'm looking down into this dungeon where, where hundreds and hundreds of, of people were, were killed viciously. And there's hay down the bottom of it. It's about a, what's about a 10, 12 foot drop. And what what happened in there? What what was that all this about? Is where, this is where Louise said the bodies were, were thrown into. And, and in fact, I'm, I'm just going to bring Graham in for one second. Graham, what is that place? Yeah, it's, uh, Adrian, it's called an obliette. 
um, and a lot of castles like this had them. It's kind of like a dungeon. Now, it, it wouldn't be as big as a dungeon you think of in your mind, like in the old... Now, English dungeon years. to me has always been underground, yeah. but this isn't. This is up on the it's top not, of the building. It's right up on the top of the building, and it's really built into the wall. So what happens is you go up to the chapel, and you just get thrown down. It's about a seven-foot drop onto spikes. Now, at the moment, I think there's a lot of trees and branches there cover the spikes for safety. But what would have happened is people would have been thrown into it. And literally uh, impaled. Impaled. But also, the, where the, the oubliette is, it's right beside the banqueting hall. So people would have starved to death. I mean, if they didn't get impaled and die, they would have starved to death. And they would have starved while the banquets were happening only a few feet away. There's also, I believe, a little gap in the wall there so they, they could look out. I'm going to stick my head over. I really don't want to go down there. It's about a, it's about a 12 foot drop. Um, and once again, I, w- I just want to let our listeners know that uh, photographs are up uh, on our website at fm104.ie. We are doing our very best to bring you as many photographs as we can. As we explained to you earlier on, we are in the middle of nowhere. And uh, to the shame of this country, the broadcast band coverage around this neck of the woods is um, is disgraceful, uh, to be honest. This so we're, we are doing our very best to get photographs up as quickly as we possibly can. This is bizarre. We're standing, we're standing at the top of the tower. Um, wide open windows, castle windows. Um, and I know it's a calm night, but we still are at the end of October. It's not cold at all up here. No, here, we're not over there. Over the other side. Where you're protected by walls. Here. It's freezing. Here, here it's 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 so, as I said, we're, we're looking down into the, into the, uh, the dungeon. Um, I have to say, I don't know. Are you going to go, go down, down into it? Absolutely. Well, I don't, I don't sorry, well, what, are you going to go down to it, Louise? No way. No way. No way. I'll mind the torch for you. You go. Are you the, going to go down into it, Jeremy? Well, there's no light down there, Adrian. That's the problem. While you're there, and I know you'll be able to hear this, I, I think I have a caller on the line um, that I just want to bring in at this moment. And I think on line one we have Dave. How are you, Dave? Is, is he there? Dave? No, I'm not hearing Dave. No, sorry about that. Okay, sorry, Jeremy. Off you go. Well... Here's the, here's the problem. There's no uh, there's no light down there, Adrian. It's it's a twelve foot drop. Um, there's a ladder going down to it, all right. But I really how do you feel though? I don't feel. I don't want to go down there. I mean, who, who in their right mind would go down to a dungeon where thousands of people or hundreds of people have been killed, um, in a haunt, in a haunted castle? Come on, Jeremy. This is what you get paid the big bucks for. You always say that. Okay, Louise, Louise, you hold, hold the torch. So let, let's just describe this again. This is, um, I, don't e- I don't even know if you're going to pick me up on the microphone if I go down here, but... Okay, now this is a, 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 there's a ladder down into this. Yeah. This is where people used to be, as, as, um, as Graham was saying, this is where people used, used to be thrown okay. in to just get rid of them, impale them. Pretty much dropped in. No, sorry, sorry, but Graham advised me going down here. Yeah, uh, there's, as you go down, that's very tight. Um, getting into the hole and it's only a couple of foot across and you go yeah, down obviously go down see. backwards now you probably land on a load of uh, twigs and the branches now those branches are there for safety because you know the spikes are still there the spikes are there yeah so just don't 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 oh, you know sake. don't jump up and down Where's Dean? sorry Adrian is I mean is it safe for me to go down this? I've been down there myself Jeremy you, you'll be alright oh my yeah, god, yeah. Oh my god. What? a butterfly on the wall yeah how bizarre is that oh my god this time of year. What are you seeing? A butterfly, an actual live butterfly on the... Have I got a camera there that I can take a photograph of that? Oh bear, God, with, bear with me for once. That is it's the most... Alive? Bear with me for one second. That is bizarre. I'll take, a, I'll take a photograph of it. So this is a butterfly in this... Down in this dungeon. Yeah. In late October. That is bi- That is bizarre. Jeremy, I'm, so, I'm sorry to cut across you, but I have to go to a break. But um, sorry, during I, the break, I, you're I going to get in. You, so I'm going to try and get. You're going to get in there and take well, a photograph. I, no, I, well, no, I haven't decided where I'm going to. Okay, get Okay, well, in. I'll come back to you straight after the break. Have a think about it. And uh, Dave, are you there? Yeah, I am. Yeah. How are yeah, you? Can Dave? you hear me? Yeah. Um, I can hear you, Grant. Now, you you had you had many experiences down here, did you? Uh, I was no, I was in Left Castle once, but I've been just. Uh, what, what experience uh, did you have here? Not a lot, to be honest. <laughs> I've been to I've been to four castles. Um, I just, uh, we went away on, on paranormal investigations with uh, paranormal investigators, basically. And what do you what did you think of um, of the, of this place of of, of Lep Castle? 
the castle itself is a fabulous old castle. It is a, a very good old castle. Um, spooky enough, um, I'm an unbeliever. Well, I was an unbeliever, and what I wanted to do was even experience, hear something, see something, but it never happened. Um, Lep is a, is a fabulous old castle, though. And Mr. Ryan is, 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 is very common. It's an amazing place. It is. Mr. Ryan is very common. Ex- yeah, he actually gave us a big fry up the next morning, and I just wanted to tell him to put that in. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, maybe we can look forward to that as well later yeah, on. Exactly. All right, Dave, thanks very much indeed. 67971104 is our telephone number. If you want to get involved in this, if you want to uh, let us know what you're hearing, um, I mean, Orla texted him, why is it so dark where you are? Well, where Jeremy is, where the uh, webcam is, uh, it is very dark up there. There's no lights. And um, if you want to look at that photograph again, this is the photograph that was taken uh, about an hour and a half ago of me up in the bloody chapel exactly where Jeremy is right now. And it's the most peculiar photograph. It looks like it's lashing snow, uh, but it's not. And the photograph is on our website at fm104.ie. Uh, you can also um, check it out on our Facebook page. Just find uh, FM104 on Facebook and the photograph is there. We need to take a quick break and our paranormal investigation of Lep Castle continues in just a moment. Sit tight. Our paranormal investigation continues just after the break. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. Death, murder, ghosts, and the unknown. We're live from Lep Castle, the most haunted castle in Europe. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night. Can you hear me? Uh, There we are. You're very welcome back. This is Adrian Kennedy broadcasting now from the banquet room, where in just a couple of minutes we're going to have a seance. And I just want to go back to our Jeremy, who's up on the top of this building, in the bloody chapel. Jeremy, you there? Yeah, I am. I'm just saying to Louise, Louise doesn't want me to go down. Um, Well, I'll tell you what you do. Send Louise back down to us down here because she's going to lead our uh, well, seance going, for us. I'm not us. going down without her here. I want you to stay there on your own. What? So tell Louise to come down here. Louise, Adrian's looking for you down down below. He wants you to go down to the banquet room. Go on, you can leave me. Come on. Are you sure? What? Well, this because we need, we, need, we need Louise okay, do you want down me here to be, for the seance. Well, then the I'm not seance. going down to the dungeon. We should, then there's no point in us being here. Okay. Go on, Louise, go down. Okay. I can't believe I'm doing this. Now, this is upstairs in the, the, the bloody chapel where Jeremy is right now. And this is a, a seven-foot drop into this cellar. It's more like a 12. Would I, would I be right in saying that, uh, that the spikes are still down the bottom of this dungeon? Is that correct, Adrian? Yeah, but covered in hay or... Just oh be careful. God. Hang on a second. It's absolutely pitch, pitch dark. Okay, I'm walking down the steps. Jesus. Be careful now. There's something shaking that... Oh my God. I really don't want to do... I don't want to go down any further. So, at this moment, you're climbing down the steps. Yeah. This is... And be careful, because this is where people were thrown to their deaths. This this gap is only, Adrian, this gap is only... is only about three foot, three foot wide. Okay, now just be careful. I don't even think I can... Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Careful. Sorry, that's. Oh. Now describe what you're feeling there. Is it, is it cold in that room? No, it's absolutely, it's absolutely roasting. Even though we're in a dungeon, I, I actually can't. Can you see anything? My f- 
over the engine like the fucking torch is gone. Here, relax, sir, relax, relax, relax. Sorry, my torch keeps going on and off. And when the torch goes off, can you not see anything? Sorry, I'm on a severe delay, my headphones here. Can you not see anything? Okay. Are you okay? Sorry, Adrian, the torch keeps cutting it. Are you alright? Jeremy, are you okay? Jeremy! Speak to me, will you? Jeremy! Sorry, I don't know if you're still there. Yes, I am still here. What are you Hello? doing? What are you doing? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Jeremy! Hello, hello, hello. Yes, what are you doing? On. Sorry, Adrian, I don't, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but... I can hear you perfectly. I can't hear you. My phone is after being taken out of my pocket and thrown onto the ground. And it's down in the dungeon. My actual phone that I was using to, to listen to is actually down in the, in the dungeon. I'm after jumping back. It was actually literally taken out of my pocket. There was nobody in there. It was sealed up in my pocket because I was using it to, I was using it to listen to, to the radio. It was after being pulled out of my pocket, off my headphones, and uh, it's gone down into the, it's gone down into the dungeon. Can uh, you not hear me? I don't know. Can you get someone? Can you get someone up here, please? You can't Straight hear away. me, no. Um, Lads, can with some light as well. Me there, please? please. Thanks very much. As I said, I don't know if you can hear me. I can't hear you now because my phone has been. It's been. Okay, we're, we're sending. You'll have to cut Jeremy's mic there because um, I'm looking back down and the he phone. can't hear me. I'll go back to him in a second. There's no, he can't hear me. Sure, he can't. No. Okay. All right, we'll come back to him in a second. Bring him down here as soon as you as soon as you get him with his phone, please. Just make sure he's all right. We're now. Sorry. Is he all right? Okay, we'll we'll find out now in a moment. We're now in the banquet room where we're sitting around a table. There's a group of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe. And our resident psychic, Louise Kings, is here, who's going to um, lead this seance. Tell me what we're going to be doing here, uh, Louise. Well, as we mentioned earlier, there's a, quite a lot of activity in this room. So what we're going to do is we're going to tune all our energies in together and hopefully they'll maybe give us a little bit more information about them and let us know that they, they are here. We're well aware that they are. I know um, Angie and Sandra and myself have picked up on quite a few of them in here. So when you're Okay, ready, so what, what do we okay. do? Well, we can do it the traditional way, which is basically you lay your hands flat, okay? Little finger to little finger, okay? And if somebody can send Lauren in here to take a few pictures. Sandra as well. You sort it, okay. Okay, everybody nice and relaxed? Feet in the ground. Okay. All right, when you're ready, just close your eyes, at least for the first couple of minutes, and then you can open up again if you wish. Okay. First of all, I'm going to say that um, in doing the seance, we are doing so incredibly respectfully. Um, we are asking that those others than ourselves that are present in this room, we are aware of your presence, and we're asking you to let us know you're here um, in any way you, you wish to let us know. Um, by using your voice, by possibly moving something, by making a sound, by flickering the, the candle lights. And um, just among us all that are also sitting around the table, um, just asking that you all pool your energy in. Okay, the more energy they have, the more energy they can show us. Sandra, when you're ready, you can come in and say something. Okay. Or if, uh, Angie, if you pick up on the ladies that are here. It certainly feels like we've got a lot of energy around us and hurt them. I feel like I've been stabbed in the side, which is getting quite painful. I know that there's females around us, but I also feel as though there is a gentleman and I'm asking him to come forward and communicate with us. I feel like I've got a really warm presence around me right now. She's really warm. I um, I th you have a male? I have a male. His name is Jared. Okay. And he says I am the boss. Okay. You are, he is. He is. He is. He is. He is. very dark. And I think he practiced the dark 
I certainly feel as though this gentleman that's around is, is, is a very, very strong energy, very manipulative. Yeah, it's quite arrogant. There's some of us here who doesn't want. Don't question me, don't question me. Mm -hmm. That's all I've I've gone. I feel, you know, he's responsible for a lot of the negative energies that would have been put in place here. I've gone cold down one side. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, mine too. Absolutely. Yeah. But I still get her and her face changes. She gets, she can make herself prettier and prettier. She did some sort of glamour magic as well because um, as I view her, her face stays the same. But if you, her perception of her changes, that to me is glamour magic. I don't actually think that she did the, all the black arts that she's been accused of. I think he's actually done more than she did. Now Jared is definitely responsible. He goes way back. I'm talking a couple of hundred years later. Andrew, who's behind me? Someone's just touching my hair. <laughs> I've got a female got a behind, you. behind you. I can feel them. Yeah, she's not normally allowed in here. She's not normally allowed in. But she's very attached to you, Louise, and it's Emily. She's no, I, I felt when we arrived. Yeah. She wants to show me something. Yeah. She wants to take she's me to a place that... She's in the doorway. She won't come in. I can really feel her behind my left. That's where the warmth is. He, he, you're right, he's on the call. He, he's freezing. Yeah, he is really... He's making sure that he takes control. Look at the difference in, in my hands, left and right. Now, describe to me, Louise, what you mean by that, for our listeners. OK, the left side of me is all really warm because it's this female energy and this young female energy to my left, and she's giving me warm. He, on the other hand, is trying to take it away, and I'm freezing. My hand here on the right is blue. Look at the difference between the two hands. OK, I know a fake tan on. Feel the hand. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it's freezing cold. I'm yeah, on my right. Down this side as yeah, I'm freezing down that side yeah. as well. See, he's yeah. having to from different time frames. He can't interfere with her. He doesn't want her in here. Yeah. You know, he he isn't that powerful though. I can sense him, but I think he, it's very diminished. Like yeah. He's That's why I would resentful. say keep an eye on your, your he's, emotions. He's resentful of that, he? Yeah, mm. because you know, he, he'll mess with them. I thought it was her, but I think it's actually no, him. I think he summons the elemental. Is your arm going, is it going up the arm now? Yeah, but I'm yeah. also getting it here in the centre. I feel like I'm being pushed. Are you getting a pain in my arm? In the centre. You, you get the pain? pain in your arm. I'm getting Which arm is the it? Centre. Straight, it's all down here. Yeah, it's gone up. The, it's the, the freezing cold has gone up. But this side is uh, still warm. It's like yeah, someone squeezing it and pushing it on the table. Yeah. I've got Elizabeth coming in, but she's to do with the child. I think she's like a governess. We met her earlier on. Oh, I can say, as yeah. you've mentioned she's her. very stern. Yeah. Uh, she's your woman, hair scra scraped back, no makeup, totally unglamorous in comparison to the other one. But the name I'm keep being given is, is it's either a Margaret or a Martha as well. I keep being given. Okay, because I'm getting. Well, I'm, I'm hearing either Margaret or Martha. Mildred. I think they can. She's not lying. It's really sore. She's not long past given the energy, so she's been the last hundred years. That's really so. You know when you feel like your veins are going to pop yeah. at that cold? Yeah. And he thinks he doesn't like females. No. no. There's movement on the gallery as well. So. She's so protecting, though. She's yeah. protecting she us. Protecting, she's protecting for the listeners females. listening, because obviously it's confusing enough for them because I know. they can see none of what we're seeing here. Who are these people? Do you know, I, as far as the people are concerned, they're not all connected at the same time, funny enough. And it's almost like they're fighting for recognition yeah. now that we're here to notice them. Yeah, Sean nice. mentioned earlier that, you know, he can live here and he doesn't, it, it doesn't always bother him what's kind of going yeah. on. Um, but we're different. We've kind of come in and it's in a way it's kind of woken them up, I suppose. Yeah, it's almost like, well, look, you know, Given them we're recognition. asking to communicate with them. So hear my story. Yeah. I'm here. I want to I show That little girl you. definitely yeah. wants to show her story. I want to show you that I'm here and, and, and hear what I've got to say. This yeah, is they'd the all have they been residents at various times and they're all kind of vying for attention. Yeah. You know, the little girl that's there in our time, she'd be the real princess little girl, yes. girly girl. Yeah, she's playful. It's like yeah, she wants to mess with you. She wants diva. to play. Yeah, a little diva. I feel she fell to her death. I sense that we she felt drags, that when we came in that she was going to. She drags the leg. Yeah, she's got either deformity to the leg or damage to the leg area. But she, I feel when we came here first today, we sat in the car outside and sensed. Sorry, the child you, energy I just have to interrupt you for one second. Our Jennifer's sitting here beside me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's after happening to it's you there? Just since we've kind of started talking and, and the girls have started talking about things, I'm going like really cold. You know that phrase that you say, somebody's walked over my grave and your yeah. whole body shakes. Mm. That's happened a couple of times. But I'm laughing actually because it's funny. My whole right arm has shaken yeah. nearly like 
you know, like if you jitter or something, and Adrian's finger is touching my finger for the seance, and he just looked at me that time as if to say, what the hell was that? But it just keeps happening where it's only my right arm. And it just right keeps too, right, yeah, shaking. Yeah. Right well. It's like somebody's getting it and shaking it in the air, like, but it's sitting flat on the table. Uh, but I'm not scared by it, if that no. makes sense. I don't feel like I'm scared by it. It's, I, I'm kind of laughing, even though think things like this normally here, scare me. Because the energy is that little bit more feminine. Mm. I, I don't think we're as threatened, but there's, it's very much active in here. Yeah. Um, there is t- uh, some male t- down the back there looking on, okay? okay. Um, not sending anything, but kind of looking mm. on. Yeah. There'd have been a lot of death in this room. Mm. Yeah. I kind yeah. of get the feeling of poisoned. Do you like remember when we food, came in here earlier? We actually bad. thought we were going to get the sick. The food is bad. Yeah. yeah. And I can, I, I can, um, when we did an investigation here a few months ago, that's exactly what we picked up on. That's what you said in here tonight. Um, you know, the, the feeling sick, um, being very aware of the kind of energy that was around and that it was but basically a death from... Yeah, yes, this was the yes. There, there was a big group of them poisoned. And we, we actually picked up on that as well, everything that you picked up on tonight. So it's so strong in here. Yeah. So what, what I'm hearing is that there's a really strong energy in this room. Energies. M- male and female. And child fighting against each other for our attention. In a way, yeah, it's kind of like we've got an audience. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Upstairs, very, very different though. In the chapel, very, very different. There's uh, so uh, much. Much more there. negative upstairs or? Yeah, it is, but there's so much. When I was standing there, I felt like people were walking through me. There's that much to do, you know what I mean? Um, if you did actually look at the photograph, the one I know I can't believe that would be that amount of orbs in one photo. But if I was to look at it differently, I would say, yeah, there is that amount of energy up there is a mass so amount and then it disappears yeah. and then it comes again then it disappears and explain to me Louise what is an orb I mean for, for people who've seen that photograph on our Facebook page and on our website it's a photograph of me that was taken about an hour and a half ago mm-hmm. upstairs um, really calm night it's not snowing even though it looks like it's snowing in the photograph it's not raining because there's a roof on the place um, there's no dust um, coming up from the ground what are orbs? What's we happening get in that photograph? photographs a lot where people see, as you just uh, pointed out, that circular light, okay? When you expand on that picture, it either will be nothing, which means it is just a light reflection or a dust particle, which a lot of the time it is just that. However, there are times when you, you zoom in on them, you, pure, you purely can see um, an energy. You sometimes can see faces, you can sometimes see entities. Um, Sometimes I've also seen moving orbs in the in naked light sitting here and you can see sort of moving orbs. So that's what you're doing, you're catching. It's a, it's, it's a form of energy. That's just the way it's been kind of caught on camera in layman's terms. You could go very um, scientific about it, but well, it's a capture of energy. Of energy don't they too? That's the energy they leave behind. And the spirits are coming back and forward and leaving <coughs> the energy as orbs. Mm-hmm. Well, it takes mm-hmm. them to energy to show themselves in 3D. Yeah. So they, they tend to show themselves as orbs, like, but they're forming. You know, and but the really, the kind of funny thing is, and a little bit scary. Before we came on air, we did a quick walk around, and we took a couple of photos of different places so we could try and show the listeners on Facebook and the website. And when we came back to upload them on the computer, we were looking at them on the camera walking down the stairs, and they were gone. We turned the camera off, we turned them back on again. Now, photos that were previously of other things not related to tonight are on the camera. Photos the ones taken tonight we, are gone. Photos that we took when we arrived are gone, they're wiped from the camera and they're nowhere. That can happen. Mm-hmm. It can happen. How, it how would that happen? Somebody just doesn't want that photograph to be seen. There was obviously something on the photograph, maybe even something more than an orb. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, quite possibly a figure or a face or, or, or something, an awful lot more. And the camera didn't, well, it wasn't put down. It wasn't, it didn't change hands. Lauren had the camera. She turned it off. She had it still in her hand when she turned it back on. The photos gone. were gone. So it's not like somebody could have taken it up and deleted it. They just disappeared. Can I just add something to there? We brought this. I have a professional camera here, Adrian, and we brought it upstairs. Sorry, Tim. Come yeah, and join sorry, us. I'm, I'm back from the mic. Yeah, I was up at the the chapel area just there a few minutes ago when when you sent me up, and I brought this professional camera with me. The battery drained down to three minutes, and then when I came out of the area, it's back I'm up back to up. three or four hours again. Same on my iPhone. I'm using seat. it as a torch. Wow. Well, okay. I have to take a quick commercial break. Everyone say, stay exactly where you are and we'll continue this, this conversation and this seance in just a moment when the FM 104 phone show co- continues. Sit tight. Our paranormal investigation continues just after the break. 
The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party. This is the FM 104 phone show Fright Night at Lep Castle. We now return to our paranormal investigation. Now, you're very welcome back. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. This is Adrian Kennedy with you tonight, and we're uh, sitting around a table in the middle of a, a seance, and it's very kind of because of the nature of what we're doing, we're taking commercial breaks and uh, interrupting ourselves, and then we've people like Jeremy coming in as white as a ghost. Now, move in here. What happened to you there? Well, I went down to the, uh, to the dungeon, and I had my, uh, my phone in my jacket pocket, like this, zipped up. And which you're using as a radio. Which I'm using as a radio. So I have the earpiece in my ear. You saw that, Louise, as I was going down. Um, Louise came down here, and I walked slowly down the... Now, you've seen that, that dungeon. It's literally, mm. um, what, three, fi- three foot wide? It's about that, yeah. It's about three foot wide. Maybe even less. Yeah. Uh, so I finally got down the ladder, down to the end of it. I was about one step off, off the end, and I felt a tug on my jacket. And the phone was literally pulled out of the jacket... And what was all that banging and all that noise? It was me jumping back up out of there, oh up the ladder. I got out of there um, quick smart. Um, I said that to him going down because he said, he said to me, should I go down there? And I said, no. So you're either going to get pulled down or you're going to get pulled to trying to get back up. So anyway, I ran back up. First of all, the, the torch kept going on and off. And that hasn't happened all night. That's a brand new battery as well. The torch went off, so I couldn't even see what I was doing. The torch finally came back on. The phone was literally... And it, w- it wasn't a fall, it was... Because you'd had... The phone would be still attached to the headphone. Like, you can see the phone here, it's attached to the headphone. It was pulled out of the headphone uh, onto the ground. So the, my first reaction was to, to run back up the, up the ladder, which I did, and I finally got out. And so it's a very tight squeeze. But then, um, obviously, someone came up then, and I had to go back down and, and get the phone. Um, and for people that are listening and maybe think that I deliberately dropped the phone, you wouldn't, you know how much I love my phone, you mm. wouldn't drop it down there because the chances of you getting it back are, are pretty, pretty slim. And can you tell me what, what happened to, to our Lauren? Lauren, come over here, what happened to you? <laughs> Basically, I was trying to take pictures of Jeremy going down and the torch kept going on and off, so I was trying to use the flash to take a picture. And then it just looked like someone grabbed something out of him and then with that I just got shoved backwards I just felt like I, and I like fell on the floor and you're, you're filthy I'm dirty filthy dirty and my hands is like nearly in bits but like anyone who knows me knows I like wouldn't be like the most to believe in that but I felt like I actually got shoved backwards and fell right onto the ground so I don't know what that was <laughs> no but as I said I, I then I went back down um, to try and find the phone using Tim's thermal imaging uh, equipment um and I'm after, and I'm after getting it back, as you as you can see. But as I said, I'm I'm crazy. I'm not crazy enough to throw my phone down into a dungeon, <laughs> um, in and risk not not getting it back. But that is that is bizarre. As I said, it was in the jacket. Then would you go in there again? Not on my own. Not on your own. Not on my own. And not not on, not on my own, and not with my phone. <laughs> okay. Okay. We go back. I want to go back in there and find out what that was and maybe Tim can bring some of his equipment in so that but we what was it what, what could Angie Angie what is the power to take a a phone, phone out of your, your pocket well I mean spirit can have that power there's plenty of energy in this building this evening mm. um, you know they're capable of so many things um, and, and you know you've got to remember that we are we've kind of come along we've asked them to do things to communicate with us and they're showing you how they can do it but in some way they don't want you to take maybe the photographs or to record yeah. everything because that's what's being interfered with. I think perhaps many will have been shamed in this building one way or another. Um, and, you know, if they're still going through that, that transition where they haven't quite overcome that, then they could still be feeling shamed and maybe they don't want things shown. I don't know, to, to be honest... we need to respect that. The whole thing is a bit of a blur to me now at this stage, but and I'd be interested to listen back to it because um, I could have sworn beforehand there was a bang or a noise or something like that, or there was a... I wasn't actually standing on the twigs when it happened. I was on the last rung of the, the ladder, and um, you could hear either breaks of twigs or something banging against against the wall. Um, as I said, it's all, it's all a complete blur to me now. All right, what I want us to do now is to try and focus again um, on where we were. We're in the banquet room. Uh, for those of you who are texting in or um, whatever, unfortunately we can't see your text in this particular room, so you'll have to bear with us for a while until I go back to uh, our studio. Uh, our Lauren is putting photographs up on our Facebook page and uh, the website fm104.ie 
and uh, you should be able to find the photographs from there and as I said do bear with us because the broadband band coverage down this neck of the woods is, is appallingly bad so uh, it's taken a long time to upload the photographs we are doing our very best anyway now Louise let's um, let's all try and focus again on okay. uh, on, on this room uh, the banquet room okay. is where we no, are I'll stay out of this okay we've already you've felt cold in one hand still do and it, it's kind of between myself and Angie there in the yeah. corner and Angie you're feeling that as well yeah, she has uh, down her half I've got the other half so it's kind of right between both of us our Jennifer here beside me has twitches in her right hand we still have <laughs> she still has That's, are you cold every now and again I get that shudder right through my bones like even like my left foot feels like it's pins and needles and both my feet are flat on the ground. It's not like my legs are crossed or, you know, like you might get pins and needles, they're flat on the ground. But it's my right arm that it feels like it's itchy and it just feels like it'll hop every now and again. Okay. It seems to be nearly everybody's thing. right side. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody else, yeah. Feel, is anyone else feeling anything like that? No? I have the pins and needles as well down the right side. Yeah. And I'm freezing on this side. You've got it on the left, know. left yeah. I have to check, is that left, left? Yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? I've pinned a needle down the right side. I'm absolutely freezing on this side. I feel like somebody's blowing cold air on me. I actually feel um, as if I've here. been injected with ice in, in this hand. Yeah, um, and I feel the jar is standing right behind me. And just for those of you, those of you listening, uh, this room is literally being lit by, cold by two candles. Yeah, it is just as if my circulation yeah. is gone. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't even think I can feel. It's here, it's, it's, you're right, but he's mm. right behind me and he's got a very oppressive. So, did you want to ask him, would he maybe make a noise to Energy. let the rest of us know that he's um, here? Okay. Is there something he wants us to know? You're talking to the box. You know, Jared. We're talking to the box. Please make your presence known. Make a sound. I don't want you to harm anybody, so don't touch anybody, but. I'm sorry, I'm getting a fit of the giggles. Yeah. It's her, she's just making me laugh. She's totally different. Yeah, to him. totally different. It's like she's trying to dispower him it's all like the time. He hates being questioned. He hates, like, I feel I want to say to you, I'm not a performer monkey. Do you know what I mean? I'll do what I want to do. I don't like him. I've got a sense of a, a real frustration within him because he can't, he can't actually do yes. what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, if he could do what he wants to do, I think we'd be legging it down the stairs <laughs> right now. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Sorry, Adrian, just Jen behind you there. He's very oppressive and is a control freak, very manipulative. You are? You okay? I'm being followed by a smell. You're being followed by a smell? <laughs> it's like a, an old man, like an unclean, I wouldn't say a dirty old man, but an unclean old man kind of smell. From and over I was there? originally over yeah, there and I've been there. moving. Yeah. And it's following me. I was behind you, it's just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, that aftershave's not working. <laughs> and you, you, but you, you can feel that you're being followed. No, it's just no matter where I move, this smell comes back. I actually asked Jeremy a few minutes ago, do I smell? Because I was paranoid that it's actually coming from me. But um, it's, just, it's just a really bad odour, like a dirty person smell that no matter where I move, I can smell it. But they can manifest you those, those smells. No, it's, like just, that. Just the smell. it's just the smell that's following me. That can happen. Mm. Okay. She's getting giddier and giddier. I, it's, it's almost like she thinks she's at a party. I mean, even I'm trying to be funny, and that's not normally like that's me. Not it's really she's. Right. Yeah. Does anybody kind of feel as if there's um, like thoughts come into your mind that's not your own? Mm. Do, do, mm. do you know what I mean? Like, not necessarily past memories, but it's I, 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 one of them's good. trying to interfere with with thoughts or something. Yeah. To break See, the concentration. It's only going to be the case when there's there's residual stuff going on in this castle that's coming from different times mm -hmm. and so they are kind of vying together and it, it's like as if one will attach to me a, and one will attach to Louise to and one will attach to Annette. Yeah, it is. It's moving. Yeah, yeah. 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 I felt the table move a couple of times. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. brilliant. You know, and I, I feel it is Jared because I feel he's the strongest of the energies. Although there's a female watching us from, from the gallery. Yeah, yeah. But I get a sense also that he's, he's kind of hanging around because obviously you're, you're quite a strong woman mm. and you know he's, he's not liking that no, because women very much all, should be right, in right in, in their own place and he's trying to intimidate me do you know what I mean so yeah it, it isn't working do you know what I mean but 
Um, and I feel that's why he also comes back to you and I as well, because we're mm. both strong women. We're not going to... Are you, are you nervous? Well, are you feeling nervous? Well, so I'm feeling a little apprehensive. Yeah, yeah, you look very nervous. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I would say I'm a little bit apprehensive. Um, I, I could see that in your face the moment we sat down at the table here. I could see when that. I, when I came in here first, the sense of... I felt my breath was being taken away, like I was sucking in bad air or something. And I felt my heart going, dump 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 like this, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when Louise came into the room, it kind of it calmed down then just a little bit. And... Um, when we first came, we both had to sit down because we both really thought we were going we to just, I thought I was going to faint at one stage yeah. earlier on today, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Talk to him a bit more. He might actually yeah. blow it out. Mm -hmm. I think if she would do he's it, a, she'd make the flame bigger. Well, we're, about to we're about to lose one candle. One candle is yeah. just going. about to this die on us. here in the centre. And just for those of you listening at home, this room is literally being lit by two candles. And one is about, we're about to lose one on top of a very tall candlestick sitting in, um, on a large dining room table. Yeah. And Jennifer's shaking again. You okay? Yeah, every time that arm shakes, I just get like, my head of laughter. My arm's doing the same. Yeah. It's like it keeps twitching like. Yeah, but it's only the one. It's not like a full no. body is shiver. No, 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 it's yeah. just my arm's just my left, my yeah. left arm is just keeps twitching. he's trying to knock over that candlestick in the middle of the table. Mm. He's because moving our it. arms are near the candlesticks. <laughs> he is. It it's, is actually yeah, swaying. It's moving. It is, it is swaying. That's it's like, quite yeah. strong. Yeah. Now. No, unless there's somebody under the table, which I don't think there is. <laughs> no, See, when, you do, when you ask them to do something, they'll do their best to do it. It's interesting. I wonder what he would do if that he could, he could take the light out. And mm -hmm. We are in darkness. I wonder yeah. how strong he would feel yeah. at that point. It's like yeah. he's seriously yeah. swaying, and the other one isn't. Look at the other one, yeah. it's not yeah. moving at all. This no. one, he's trying to shift it. I'm just wondering, is that arm movement on the table that's doing that now? Or maybe just be still for a few seconds and just see what happens. Is anybody moving up? No. no. Talk to him again there, Sandra. Okay. Jared, if you have something to say, or something you want to show us, something you want to do, feel free. Mm -hmm. the bang bang the it sounded like a zip going. No, no, it was out there. Out there. Yeah. There was a bang, then it sounded like a, a zip opening or something. Yeah. Um, Could have been a microphone. Possibly. Sounded like. I think he might. Would there have been O'Carroll's here at one stage? Yeah. There is O'Carroll's. I feel he's, he's, a, he's an O'Carroll. So he was one of the priests? I just heard a whisper. Yeah. Did you just hear that? Yeah. yeah. And when like we were upstairs, there's a lot like of a us. knock from that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was over there. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It was like a murmur. If you have something you want to say, Jared, please say it. If you have something you want to do. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> it was like okay. a... Like a yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello? No now, we're sitting at the table and the noise that they're describing is coming from outside that door. Can you see anything? No. No, nothing. But we're all hearing it. Mm -hmm. Jared, try a little bit harder. We did hear you the first time. We thank you for that. So if you try some more, please. No drafts in here, is there? No. I mean, the flame oh. is changes every time you yeah. talk. It yeah. just changes. It? Yeah. Um, it goes higher. Now, Come on, Jared. Getting... You know you want to show yourself. Baltic. Yeah. 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 Really, really cold. My hands are like ice. Now that could be him I'm consuming sure. our energy in order to be able to yeah. do something. It is, isn't it? I can't feel my hands. There's something just moving. Can't feel this one here. I'm yeah, glad I don't because it's too sore. <laughs> hey, Jennifer's getting her twitches <laughs> again. <laughs> does it? Does it? Does anybody sense a dog in the room? Is there a dog in the castle? Like a, I mean, now, yeah. physically, like a dog yes, in the castle. Is. I just sense that it's a dog padding around the table. Yeah. I wonder if the dog we met earlier on up in the, the spirit dog, the, it's like big, like a mastiff. Is the table okay, this rocking table back is and forward? Yeah. The table's rocking back and forward. Mm -hmm. Because the, um, there's like a, a tablecloth over the table that, I don't know, it's what, like a foot long on either side or something. It's just literally leaning it's on my legs, but it lifted up yeah, off my legs. Yeah. 
No, okay, I just said I didn't feel that. But okay, that was like somebody uh, clearing their throat. Yeah. yeah. Is every, where is everybody? Is there, is there anybody else? There's nobody else. No, no, no. Well, that came no, from upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That well, came from upstairs. Gallery anyway. Does, does is there anybody up there? In the gallery no, there's there? There's 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 oh, we mean up in the... No. I don't know. There's nobody physically up there as in a living person. We've definitely been watched. The temperature's yeah. dropping and dropping and dropping. Yeah. Is that it is getting colder, I have to say. Yeah, it's getting colder. Is that going up on any of the meters? Because it's getting seriously and seriously colder. Thomas, can you go with the It is actually all of a sudden like. Yeah, it's gone very, very cold. Yeah, my knees are rapidly freezing yeah. cold. Yeah. Now, what does this machine tell us? It's a EMF meter reader which uh, picks up electromagnetic fields. These uh, fields are given off if something is about to manifest itself. That's the theory behind it. It can also pick up on bad wiring, but it's, it, we did a base check there earlier and it's fine. Now, there you go. Okay, now this is... Uh, yeah. Is this meter fine? is starting to light up. Is it because it's near the microphone? No, because it, it's, it, it only started. Okay, now it, it's... Okay. There are five lights on it. And it's, there's one permanently lit, and it has uh, flashed two or three times into into uh, the yellow. What does that mean, uh, Tim? What's it, that telling me? It means me? it's picking up on electromagnetic oh, fields in the area. Yeah. The candle just nearly went out. Thank you. So if it's picking up on these electromagnetic fields. They can happen naturally, but uh, it's it's definitely uh, we did a base check, so it's not oh, there it goes oh. again. Okay, you can be moving backwards, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just point it towards um, Sandra because I know there's something here. There's mm -hmm. something strong really? down by Sandra. Yeah. Well, put it down beside her and maybe ask to light it up. Yeah. Could you walk towards your energy, towards the, you know, that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Is anybody around this table that'd like to make contact? If it's Jared, Mildred, Emily, somebody show us something. Look at the candle rocket. Yeah, really. mm -hmm. oh, what was that? Sorry, I'm just checking the temperature. Sugar. Oh, see the candle rocket. He's playing with us a little bit. He's moving around the table. Wow. He's sort of picking up there. That's got mm. even stronger there. He's down around Adrian now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> was that table red? Oh, it sounds like an old man. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was very it clear. Like it's from that corner behind yes, you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a three degree difference temperature down here mm -hmm. than there is up there. <coughs> Colder? Yeah, it's, we're warm up here. Oh, oh warm. The, the box. Here's was this flying there, look. Oh, it went right up to the red. Come on, Jerry, do that again. You know you want to show us what you can do, Jared. My hands are freezing. Yeah, it's Baltic. Okay, the candle's oh. nearly gone. We're about to lose our second candle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm making this now. <laughs> Make a sound, Jared. What's whispering? Are you whispering? No, I could hear. I heard Did you hear a whisper? Yeah. 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 But it was, it was a very, like a growly whisper. Yeah. That's oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, who's two walking taps, around? Two taps. Yeah, that's definitely taps. Does that come from upstairs? Yeah, yeah. it sounded like it came from upstairs, yeah. Yes. Two taps down there. What key? In that alcove. Down here? Yeah. There. Yeah, there and that's over there. There's a little game playing going on with the way it's... Yeah, but yeah. See, they can make us right. think we're hearing it in different places as well. Like, I might hear it yeah, here, and you might hear it over there. Yeah. You know? Definitely like that yeah. on the yes. top of it. Exactly. But it's like, it's starting to feel a little bit weird in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're starting oh, to look a bit nervous. Yeah, I'm not yeah, laughing anymore. The energy, no. Really. There's a darker... It is starting, yeah. Okay, one of our candles is now totally gone. It's moving again, the the meter. Look, it's flying up and down. And what's that telling us? That's telling us that, so that there is contact being made. Right here, now. 
I'd interpret that, that he's actually building up on strength. Yes, as absolutely. We speak. He's definitely yes. going to show yes. something before the night is finished. I can feel him getting stronger and stronger. Is the candlestick moving again? You know, he's definitely going to show us something before the night is finished. Oh, yeah. like, there you go. It's like, don't that. dare me. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, we're, like, we are, in a sense, that daring That push came me. from that side. Did any of you move the table towards no. us? Well, he's very active now, so... Everyone was pushed from there, though. You see that? No, I can. I can see the meter moving. Yeah, it's it's um, going up into the red. As well. It really is going up into the red now. Yeah, but it's actually. He's getting annoyed. I, I think part of him is annoyed with himself because he's not actually able to manifest what he wants to manifest right now. But I think if he builds up enough energy, something's going to happen. Thomas, get the thermal image. But we are all protected, so you don't need to be worried or anything. So. Right, look. Yeah. It's not even flashing up. It's no, 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 you can actually feel there. his frustration. He's getting irate now. He's getting angry. Yeah, he's getting irate now. Don't and that's why she's again, laughing because when we first sat down, way, don't way test me, don't test me. And you know what, I, I mean, what really comes to mind for me with, with Gerard is that I wonder what would happen if it was women only in this room. Oh, it yes, there. that's interesting. That would be very interesting. Mm. The only problem, Angie, is the host of the show isn't a woman. <laughs> 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 we could call him Adrienne for half an hour. On that note, <laughs> we're going to take a, a very quick commercial break. And after the break... Um, I think I've nearly persuaded uh, Jeremy to head back up to that dungeon because I want to explore that. Everyone's rubbing their hands together now. Everyone's freezing. Mm. Um, I want uh, Jeremy's going to go back up to uh, the the dungeon, which is upstairs, just beside the bloody chapel, because that's the f that's the strongest energy that we have felt in the place. Uh, we're going to send him up there now, and uh, join us after the break when uh, I'll be back in the studio and Jeremy Jeremy will be back in uh, the bloody chapel. If you've just joined us, you're listening to FM 104's phone show live from Lep Castle in County Offaly. Our journey continues. Do you dare to join us? Yes. We're back just after the break. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. <laughs> the terror, the fear, the unknown. Live from Lep Castle, the FM 104 phone show Fright Night. We now return to our paranormal investigation. Now, you're very welcome back. Uh, I am now back in our studio, which is just inside the front door of Lep Castle. If you've seen any photographs of the building, uh, you'll know exactly where I am. A lot of you, as I said, I was out of contact with our texts during that section of the programme because uh, we were I was upstairs. Uh, from 10.38 to 10.40, there was animal-like roars coming through. Did anybody else hear them? Uh, and again, now at 10.43, says uh, Alan in Glasnevin. Um, I think I smell, I get that smell as well, says somebody else. Um, Adrian, I keep hearing a groan in the background. Uh, can you not hear it? A man groaning, uh, it's actually gotten a bit louder. And we want you to text in uh, any of your comments, please, right now to 53104. Um, I want to just go to Kevin on line one. Kevin, good evening to you. Hi, how are you? Good. Now, Hello. Kevin, um, you, you've, you've been looking at that photograph that was taken of me earlier on this evening up in the uh, bloody chapel. I have, and you've, yeah. you've zoomed in on it. I zoomed in, I have a HCC sensation phone and I can zoom straight in on one of the pictures on the objects and you can see a face in one of them. An object of a face. Oh, now it's really a blurry. A recognisable face? Yeah, it's really blurry. Now you wouldn't, you'd have to zoom straight into it and you can see it. Um, it's like you can see two eyes, a nose and a mouth in one of the circles. And... Uh, as I was saying earlier on, I mean, in that photograph, it looks like it's snowing, but it wasn't. It was as calm as as it is right now where I'm yeah. sitting. And you can definitely, I, I, we, I just haven't had an opportunity, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just haven't had an opportunity yet to zoom in on any of the pictures, obviously, yeah. because of where we are and what we're doing. But you can definitely see, definitely see a an face on, on, face. on, on that particular picture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wow. 
Okay. All right, now for any of you, uh, thanks very much indeed, uh, Kevin. For those of you who haven't seen uh, the photographs yet, all you have to do is log on to FM 104's uh, Facebook page or our website at fm104.ie. Uh, the photographs are up on both, and you can check them out for yourself. Uh, we've, we're have we putting up photographs constantly on both the website and on uh, Facebook. So, Okay, so you're um, now up at... We've also got the Ghost Hunters here with us as well with thermal imaging and all that sort of stuff. So if anything happens... Now, a couple of seconds ago, just when you were talking to one of the callers, the meter, as you said, it went off the chart, didn't it? Yeah, the K2 meter went up to red a couple of times there. Meaning, meaning what? It means there's someone around us. I think it's following you. Lovely. That's all I need to know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go down. We did a base reading a little earlier and checked to see that there wasn't anything causing... Uh, fields and there's not and then it's just buying 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 every few minutes so Jeremy you, ju- just do me a uh, favour yeah, just, just hang on there for one second because I just want to go to Nolene on line one um, Nolene are you there? I am how are you? Now Nolene um, you're one of the people that can hear this howling in the background which I have to say I can't hear I haven't heard describe yeah, to me what that howling sounds like it sounds more like morning it's it's not very loud but there's on on the your Facebook page, a lot, a lot of people have heard it. It's, it's a lot of people have heard it. Yeah. Oh my God! Sorry, agent. Just going back to you. Sorry, agent. The the, the meter is going ballistic here. And why is it going ballistic at me? Oh my God! Get, get it away from me! <laughs> it's literally when it's when it's pointed right at me. It's going it's going into the red. It's going into the red when it's pointing at you. Yeah. And uh, sorry, Nolene. Here to see Jeremy tonight. Would yeah. You the up, please, on hang the on a sec. Sorry, agent. Oh my. <laughs> sorry, agent. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Sorry, Tim. Go ahead. Okay. If you're here with us tonight and you're here to see Jeremy, if you want to make contact with Jeremy, please light up the lights by moving your energy towards the grey box. You're safe for the moment. Okay, nothing's happened, so... Nothing. Do you like Jeremy? Move your energy towards the box. Nobody likes Jeremy. Do you, do you want him to leave? Do you want Jeremy to leave this building? Are we mm-hmm. welcome here? Nolan, can I ask you, that, that, that noise that you heard, was it a, a, a scary noise? Oh, whoa, 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 yeah, there we go. Okay. It was terrifying. <laughs> The red, yeah. Sorry, Rage, and we're after getting a reading back. Um, the question asked was, do you want to communicate with us? And again, it shot into the red. If you want to communicate with us, would you like to, to meet up again, please? Are you trapped here? Are you afraid? <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, why, this, uh, Keith, over to you. Um, this person, whoever they are, um, they want to communicate with us, that's clear, and they, they're they afraid or they're trapped. Or? Oh, it could take time to gather the it, energy. It, Sorry, it, Keith. It, it, yeah, the energy is building. It could well be um, that, that we have some kind of spirit that's actually trapped somewhere between um, here and, and uh, you know, the, like the, the, the next world. Um, so it'd be interesting when we do a seance up here le- later on to see if we can pick that up and see if there's anything we can do to yeah, help. There we go again, there we go. Okay, Adrian, you can finish there with Nolene and then we'll, we'll go down, back down into the uh, the dungeon. Okay, now, sorry, Nolene, are you still there? Yeah, hi, Adrian. It's, I'm just it's, looking at uh, some... Uh, I'm just looking at um, the comments on our Facebook and yes, an awful lot of people have heard the noise that you're, uh, you're talking about. When I was upstairs, I couldn't hear those noises, I have to be honest with you. Um, no, there's a, lot of people, we were... there's a lot of people, especially those on the Irish Ghost Hunters page, that have heard it. Nearly everybody has heard it, and people have heard tapping, they've heard dogs howling. It's terrifying. I'm sitting here on my own, and I'm terrified. Okay, well, thanks for your call, Nolan. Um... Let me go to Ben on line two. How are you, Ben? Adrian, how are things? Grand, thanks, Ben. Now, you've actually been here in yeah. Left Castle. I have, I've been there a couple of times. Um, I'm the founder of Boyne Paranormal here in Drogheda, and we've actually investigated with Sean there probably three or four times now at this stage. Hello? And what have, you, what have you experienced down here? Well, 
exactly where you're sitting, when we first came in there, we did a base reading of temperatures and right to the left hand side of the fireplace, we got a seven degree difference. And this brought us up to the main banquet hall. And just above the balcony, there's a bed underneath that. Just above that, um, we got a little girl's voice. We asked, just did a call out and said, are you here with us now? We got a girl replying saying yes, uh, that she was there with us, you know. Um, And up where Jeremy is now at the moment, up in the bloody chapel, the K2 hits were unbelievable. Absolutely. We've got a lot of digital recording, a lot of video footage and K2 hits, everything all recorded. Just to prove what we got, it was just amazing. The, The feelings up there is just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Have you been to the room on the left hand side of the bloody chapel? Um, I haven't yet. No. Well, there's What's a little there? room. Yeah, when you go up there, not the one where he's climbing down into the dungeon where the spikes. There's a little uh, entrance just to your left, and there's two rooms. One goes down, and one goes up. The small one is the old uh, toilets, let's say, for the castle. But there's a little chamber going down steps, and it leads to a door that just leads to a 50 foot drop. Now we kept getting brought in to there and brought down to the steps but we wouldn't go any further because obviously we knew there was a drop there but it was like something was bringing us down to that place we were following with the k2 meters and when we we're getting the strongest signal we just kept following it and it kept bringing us down to the steps so each time we we followed it it brought us down to the steps and we just we wouldn't go any further but then we would stand in the middle of the bloody chapel and we could feel like there, like just stand in total darkness with your k2 meters and you could feel something circulating you Constantly, constantly going around you and then coming like coming close, going back, coming close, going back. It was just a, a mad experience altogether. All right, Ben, thanks very much indeed for your uh, call. By the way, if you want to log on to our website, fm104.ie, we are putting photographs up on our website as we speak, um, uh, as much as we possibly can. But do bear with us because the uh, broadband coverage is very uh, bad down this neck of the woods. So uh, we're getting pictures up as quickly as we uh, possibly can. Now, let me go back to uh, Jeremy, who's, yep. who is up in the uh, bloody chapel. I am, Adrian. I'm back up at the, the bloody chapel now. Um, now, I'm here with Keith, who's already in place. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go. I'm going to go back down to the dungeon now. Now, this is where um, your phone was this robbed. This is where my phone was, was robbed. out of so. your pocket. So you've got to move now to okay. Okay, so we've got thermal imaging here. We've got the meter in place as well. Now, when, when, we, moved, when we moved the meter uh, into this uh, room, it was absolutely off the charts. Uh, no, no, I'll be good. I'll be good. Okay, so I'm going down. I can't believe I'm going back down here. I'm going to go down backwards, actually. Okay, so I'm going right down into the uh, the dungeon. I have to say, it's not half as scary doing it when you have people around you. This is so so tight, Adrian. You would not believe. And it's, it, it's, I haven't been in it, but I've, I've, I've looked into it, and it's, it's a yeah, claustrophobic it's a, sort of feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it's about three by two, um, covered in hay, but underneath the hay, we believe there are, there are spikes, which they used to throw the dead bodies down on. Um, were they dead when you fell down or alive? I think they were alive. they were alive, they? were alive, okay. Okay, we're, we're down here, we have the, the meter. Um, do we, hasn't gone off once. Okay. Is anybody here that would like to communicate? Could you make the lights light up on the, the meter, please? Go on, show. Oh, there we go. Come on, show us what you can do. We, we came down to talk to you, so please, please light up the meter. Whoa, there we go. There we go. If you want to communicate with us, could you please light up the meter again? I think if you ask the question. Okay, let me. Okay, um, are you happy with us being here? Do you want us here? If you want us here, Please light up the meter, if you want us here. Please light up the meter. Okay. Do you want us to leave? Come on, show us what you can do. Light up the meter if you want us to leave. Come on, you can do it. Light up the meter if you want us to leave. Do you want to communicate with us? Mm. A bit, a bit, they've been very stubborn. Yeah, they're, it's moving now. Sorry, I've just been told uh, by Tim, who's up at the, the top of the dungeon, there's a, a thermal shape appearing. What, beside me, Tim, is it? I, I, well, I don't know where you are, but I can I figure it's behind you. It, oh, Lord. It's behind me. Okay, let me get, give, give me the meter here. 
Okay. Um, is there somebody here with me? Please light up this meter if you're if you're here. I'll take a photograph. See is there anything behind you? Okay. If the, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. It's lighting up like a Christmas tree here. I don't know what question will I ask, Keith. Um, in, in, I mean, anything you want. There we go. It's going now. Yeah, it's going. So, um, yeah. Are you are you happy that we're down here with you? If you're happy that we're down here, will you please light up the meter, please? Are you male? There we go. There we go. Are you male? Light up the meter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, the meter's meter's going again. It's going, yeah. Whoa, it's hopping. Whoa, really honestly, Adrian, this thing is is flashing like like crazy now. Um, it's actually it's so scary it's being scary. out here in this it's dungeon. Very warm down here. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask you, Jeremy. Is it warm or cold where you it's, are? We're we're all basically on our hunkers because it's so low down. It's it's warm, isn't it? It's getting hard it's to warm. breathe. But the the atmosphere here is very very oppressive. I mean, I've 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 developed quite a headache since being down here, and we've only been down here a few minutes. What's what's down here with us, Keith, in your in your mind? Um. Well, I mean, what we're experiencing is the, the residual energy that's actually in the fabric of the building from what happened here. And, of course, you know, what happened down here was pretty violent and pretty bloody. So um, you, you're going to experience that just just through the fabric of the building. Okay, let me ask a, qu a question again. Again, I'm holding the meter here, Adrian, just to, for people who are uh, tuning in late. This is a meter with five uh, lights on it. Um, and it can go right up into the red. At the moment, it's it's on green. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to ask a question. Um, if I can ask you a question, um, were you killed in this in this dungeon? Did you die in this dungeon? If you did, please light up the meter. Did you die in this dungeon? Please answer me. Come on, you've done this before. You've lit up the meter. Light it up again. Were you killed in this room here? Nothing. Mm. If there's anybody here, could you please make a noise? Jeremy, to you, you know where the torch is, don't move it. Okay, sorry, Tim is talking to me up there with his thermal imaging. What are you seeing, Tim? Three inches behind the torch, to the right hand side of the torch. Behind the torch, which is beside me, yeah? Yeah, put your hand behind the torch. Put my hand behind the torch. Oh, there oh, we go, whoa. Okay, okay, there we go. It's going again. Yeah, a bit back more, more. More to your right. Oh! What is it? What's that? Do you I just, get in there? What'd you get? I just felt something. Okay, that's exactly where I'm picking up this spot. This oh. Spot. Okay, there's, yeah, the, and again, it's going, it's going. Yeah, it's going Your hand is right over it now. Back a bit more. Do you, want to ask, huh? do you want to ask the question? Did you die here? Could you please light, light up the meter if you died here? Please let us know. Please light up the meter. Go on, you've been very good. Please light up the meter if, you've, if you died here. Was this your home? Did you live here? Was this your home? It's been, been very stubborn, isn't it? It seems to come and go, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Adrian, I'm not happy to be staying down here, so can I please get out of here? Uh, yes, if you want to. Yeah, because I... Uh, uh, do you feel... I mean... I, We've done this a couple of years in a row. Do you feel uncomfortable where you are? Yeah, of course I do. We're, we're in a dungeon where hundreds of people uh, died. Well, stay where you are right for just a second, okay? You because want me to stay here? Just stay there for a second. Okay. Just, just stay there. Okay, there's the, there's the K2 meter going again. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Adrian. I, I just want to take this call from Aoife. Are you there, Aoife? Hey, Adrian. Now, Aoife, you were able to hear noises as well. And this yeah. is something that's kind of freaking me out a little bit because I haven't heard any of these noises, I have to be honest with you. What could it's you hear? freaking me out. No, um, I think he was upstairs in a room where one of the lads was saying um, up over a window there was a bed or something uh, earlier on. And, right, yeah. uh, as, as he said that, you could hear, um, not like a child's voice in the background. And I was like, oh my God. And, and I wouldn't mind, I'm actually shaking here listening to you on the phone. Now, Jeremy, could you hear any noise of a child? I did when we were in the banquet room about about uh, half an hour ago. Um, that's the only time I, I've I've heard a, a child. No, this is about 
about ten minutes ago, not even that when the, one of the lads was on the radio explaining something about uh, a bed over a window or something. And the minute he said that, you could hear a child's voice in the background. No, I didn't hear that, but I have to say, you know, you really don't want to stay here any longer if we can if we can get out of here. All right, Aoife, thanks very much indeed for your call. 67974104 is our telephone number if you want to get in touch with us. Um, you can also text us your comments to 53104. Just to let you know, Jeremy, what people can hear while you're in that room. I, I'd rather you didn't tell me until I left well, the I'm room. I'm going to tell you while you're there, okay? Uh, I can hear that moaning, and every time I hear it, my dog goes into the corner of the room and howls. Wow. Well. Um, let me see... Um, I think there's a child there with Jeremy. There's a a male spirit there with them. His name is Michael. He died in the 1920s and was shot to death. And a a lot of people, I heard the child as well. An awful lot of people are texting in, I heard the child as well. Now, I haven't heard um, that child noise that uh, that people are talking about. No, nor have I. So you're now in, in the dungeon on your own. But just well, Keith is here with me as well. And do you feel relaxed now? No, no, not at all. You want to get out of there? Yeah. Okay, we we'll let you get I out. Re- of there. I really do. Um, and I think, as I said, it's time maybe you put you put uh, two other people uh, to the task now at this stage and gave me a break. Um, all right, but we're I gonna. We're I know we, we we were asking for volunteers to put in the uh, in the red room, weren't we? We were, and um, we have. Jennifer and, uh, and Jennifer. Jenny, who are yeah. the two Jennifers, I think, are going to. So maybe somebody could bring them. Pat, maybe you could bring them into that room now because we're going to sit them in there for about 20 minutes and just to. Uh, they're going to be locked in there on their own just so that we can get a, a feeling of um, what it's like in that room. And they're going to be there on their own, as I said. You're listening to FM 104's phone show. We're broadcasting live tonight from Lepp Castle in County Offaly. It's near, uh, near the Tipperary border. And. It's cold here tonight. It's eerie, I have to tell you. And we are going to take more of your calls in a couple of minutes if you want to call us on 67971104. And um, we'll also read out some of your texts as well. Let us know if you could hear that. I heard a woman uh, answering, Jeremy. It wasn't a child, says Fiona. Uh, I heard the child too, but assumed it was a caller's kid in the background. You had a woman on at the time. I heard uh, the kid, says Neve. And Adrian, I just zoomed in on that picture of you in the bloody chapel, and I can see three different figures. All look like men, but just the face, not the body to it. Now, in case you're wondering what we're talking about, there's a picture taken earlier on this evening of uh, me up in the bloody chapel. Uh, This was taken before we went on air, and it's the most peculiar, bizarre picture. Uh, This photograph was taken indoors, it's on our uh, Facebook page. You can look at it right now. It's on our website at fm104.ie. And it's a photograph of me taken in the bloody chapel earlier on. It looks like it's lashing snow. It wasn't snowing. There's a roof on the place. It looks like it might be raining. It wasn't raining. There's a roof on the place. It looks like it could be dust. There was no dust. That is the most peculiar photograph. Have a look at it. And maybe if you have uh, equipment that you can... Zoom in on photographs, you can do that as well. Um, Another couple of your texts. I thought I heard a child crying, but thought um, it was something in the background. Not sure what it was. Uh, I heard a child cry too. I heard diddly squat, says Barry. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, we'll be back with a continuation of our paranormal investigation when the phone show continues. Our journey continues. Do you dare to join us? We're back. Just after the break, the FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. Death, murder, ghosts, and the unknown. We're live from Lep Castle, the most haunted castle in Europe. The FM 104 phone show, Fright Night. You're very welcome back. Thank you very much indeed for joining us live via satellite from Lep Castle in County Offaly. This is FM 104's phone show with Adrian Kennedy. Uh, We're not far from the Tipperary border. 
Let me take uh, a couple of calls before we continue our investigation. Uh, Christy is on line one. Christy, good evening to you. Hello, is that the hairdryer, yeah? Hello, it is. Now, Christy, it is. It is, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was listening there a few minutes ago, and when, when Jeremy was down in that dungeon, I heard the child clearly saying, what are you doing here? You heard a child saying, what are you doing yeah, here? Sh- shouting, what are you doing down here? Now, is Jeremy still... Are you there, Jeremy? I am, Adrian, yeah. Could you hear that? No, I couldn't hear a thing. Not a, not a thing. And the, the, the child was saying, what are you doing here? Clearly shouting. I, I could hear it cl- clearly over everything else. What are you doing down here? No, I couldn't hear any of that now. And that's all she said was, that, what are you that, doing here? That, that's, all, that's all she said. What are you doing down here, she says. Wow. Okay, but text us, um, uh, 53104 is our text number. If you heard it as well, I'd like to hear from you. You can also uh, post comments on our Facebook page. Thanks very much indeed uh, for your call. And let me go to, uh, where am I going? Dave, you're on FM 104. How are you, Dave? Hello, Adrian. How are you? Good. Good, Dave, Um, you are um, a medium yourself, is that right? Yes, uh, I'm a medium myself, yeah. Um, uh, funny, you know, I was actually down there which, uh, in the castle there, I think about a year ago. It was, um, I remember it was a very bad night. It was about minus 12 or so around in, in the snow everywhere, you know. And uh, there's quite a lot, it's a lovely, it's a great location um, in respect to the fact that there's, there's quite a lot of active spirits. Um, especially, you, you'll trap a lot of stuff, I think, on the thermal imaging, you know. Um, I know I had one instant there. I don't know where you are now, Adrian, in the castle, but... Um, well, I'm, I'm downstairs just inside the front door we, where we have our, our kind of studio okay. set up. Grant, and, and you know the big fireplace there? That's the... the um, there's there's a big fireplace. Heat, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just just to the... Uh, just if you were walking to go out the door, basically, from the fire, just there, I, 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 the last time I was there, now I know I was standing there and... Um, um, uh, the guys had a thermal in- imager camera behind me as such but um, I felt two spirits one coming from the left basically and one coming from the right um, and basically on the thermal imaging yeah, I found out later that they actually had two funnels of cold air like effectively coming towards me and uh, uh, there's, there's quite a there's quite you know you, you, it, it, I, I know for a fact that a lot of the a lot of the stuff that you'll catch will certainly be on the um, on the thermal uh, imaging end of it you know but um, there's quite a lot now of Jeremy, strong. you're th- you're there with with the thermal I- imaging unit and stuff is coming up on that is it? Uh, yeah. Well, Jeremy, you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. You, you've you've seen the thermal imaging unit, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a photograph going up on the on the uh, the FM104 website uh, pretty soon. But basically, this uh, thermal imaging unit showed uh, it showed me down in the dungeon, and beside me, uh, this this warm warm presence uh, just beside me, which is what yeah. I actually felt brush off my hand that time. Yeah, there's actually two spirits there. There's a, there's a male, uh, there's a male and a female. Um, I think they're actually French, uh, from my from uh, if my memory serves me right. But um, um, they're quite strong. They, th- those two two particular spirits are quite strong on the thermal. Um, uh, we found uh, through the night, you know, and um, you, you, you know you probably got a lot of hits on that. I have to say. And uh, there is actually several children running around, uh, you know, in the main, ho- you know, with the, with the fireplaces there. There's actually quite a lot of kids running around. So you'll get low-level um, cold spots, you know, uh, m- movement. It, I, I don't know whether I- mm. if you have a medium there at the moment, but if um, you should get a lot of, um, like, around your, we, we actually found um, around your, an- you know, from your, not from your ankle, from the, your lower calf, they would actually come around and actually, you know, play tricks. You know, they'll actually uh, hit hit off your legs and various things like that. You know, but there is definitely several children there that w- would run around um, the floor there. You know, and uh, all right, Dave. It, thanks very know. much indeed for your call. Nope. No problem at all. I have to to move on because we are now going to uh, get organised for our um, seance up in uh, the bloody chapel, which is where Jeremy still is. But before that, we have um, put uh, two of our um, ladies who are here with us into, what are we calling this room, the red room? Yeah, that's what it's called, the red room. Seemingly because... uh 
Because it's inhabited by the ghost of a woman who's dressed in red, believe it or not. That's why it's called the Red Room. This is a room that's about uh, six by six by four, I'd say six by four foot. It's a tiny little room, two little seats in the room where we've placed uh, the two Jennifers. Okay, so we've two Jennifers there. Are you there, girls? Hi. Hi. What does that room feel like? It's actually really weird because I've just been thinking about it. The, the best way I suppose to describe it is, you know, if you're coming into a house from a cold night and the heating's been on, it hits you when you walk in, you think, oh, it's lovely and warm. That's exactly it. When we walk through the doorway and down the step, like I, you know, when I've been elsewhere in the castle, I've had gloves and hat and scarf and everything on. I have my coat open, my gloves are off, scarves off, hats off, everything. It's actually cosy in here, if that makes any sense. Okay, so do you, do you feel comfortable? Yeah, I don't it's feel... It's cosy. It is, isn't it? <laughs> like, that's really the only way of describing it. It's kind of cosy. Like, the two of us are sitting here on a chair and it's it's not cold. Um, you know, obviously I'm ecstatic about being in a room this size and, you know, we're in a scary chapel, but it's, it certainly doesn't feel like the room where we're doing the seance. It, it doesn't have that type of feeling in it. It's It's fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jeremy, are you still there? I'm up in the bloody chapel. Uh, okay, you're now, back uh, up in the bloody chapel. Where we've placed uh, a table, um, literally dead centre of the bloody chapel. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven of us up here. Um, it's starting to get cold up here, isn't it, Angie? It certainly is getting very cold up here, yeah. Okay, now girls, your microphone is on. Yeah, just as you, sorry, cut over to Jeremy there, I just looked at Jen and I said, are you starting to get a smell? And she's nodding at me. It's like... Um, like a kind of musty, like, you know... Incense, like a exactly, churchy incense. That's exactly smell, yeah. the type of smell where they go around the church with the incense and it's a strong type of smell. It's been grown and growing, but it's quite strong in mm. here now. Okay, so a smell. Yeah, like an incense. The smells are following me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is quite strong and it's, it's only kind of appeared as Jeremy left us to go upstairs. Um, it, it's only appeared... Okay, well, like I said, your microphone, you're not alone okay. in that your microphone is open at all times. And if you hear anything or you're, or you're worried about anything, just shout and I'll hear you. Oh, we will, don't worry. Red light coming from, what's that? But also be aware that everybody can hear you. Oh, so that's don't, okay. <laughs> okay. Don't start gossiping there amongst <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> okay. Now, sorry, Jeremy, back to you. Okay, back to the bloody chapel. This is, uh, to put it into perspective, this is the very top of the, the castle. It's, um, it's basically, it's like the Hellfire Club. Very uh, tall roof, galvanised roof which has been put on it in the last few years. Open windows. The breeze is picking up now and it's starting to, to go through the, uh, the chapel. It's quite cold. We have a table placed uh, dead centre in the chapel. We have uh, uh, seven of us here. Um, and uh, well, d- Talk us through it, Angie. What are we about to do? Well, we're just about to ask um, spirits. We're going to do table tilting and we're going to ask spirits to connect um, with us and communicate with us by moving the table. Hopefully they will. They do many times, but not always. So we've just got to really hope. That's the thing that a lot of people think. A lot of people think that that ghosts and spirits are like in the movies that they just appear on cue, and they don't. Should they though? They don't. They don't. It doesn't work like that. Sure, it doesn't. No, it doesn't work like that. They'll do it if they want to. Um, some are very happy to do that. Um, some decide no. We've actually had it where we, we we were at one place where we were asking them to move the table, and everybody in the group heard them go no with a really, really. It was a gentleman, and it was a really um, gruff voice. You know, yeah, they don't want to do it. They won't do it. But all we can do is ask. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just heard the two girls talking there. Are they okay? Yeah, it, it's uh, like I'm getting really itchy, like as if someone is, I have my hair down. It's like someone's moving my hair and like my ear is really itchy and, you know, like I can feel kind of my hair on my face, but I'm getting itchy and Jen is kind of feeling like a... It's almost like a pressure. Okay, I'll give you the countdown in a sec. It is uh, like a Angie. pressure. It's Start. like I can even feel it now on my chest, actually, on my left foot is it's gone dead what? I'm a, trying pressure, to off the ground. a pressure on your chest it's like no like who's it's laughing? like sorry somebody here somebody la- who's yeah, laughing yeah. Somebody sorry laughing. that's uh that's them oh. it's like um no you it's like a pressure no we don't um you know like you really tight chest you know like somebody's kind of pushing on you mm-hmm. that type of of kind of pressure like it's more on the top of my head though I don't know if it's just because the room is very small that I'm claustrophobic, but it's just like a pressure on my head. Yeah, I think the longer the minutes are going on, the more we're kind of... Yeah. The more the... the okay, so it was all lovely, it was all lovely and cosy oh, at the start. Yeah, and now it's really? kind of... It's getting cosier, but, yeah. but in the wrong kind of way. Now, sorry, Jeremy, I'm... I'm yes, Adrian. I'm back to you. Are you... You nearly I'm, set up for this? Yeah, we're in place. Well... 
as I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rush Angie. So when you're when you're ready, Angie, over to you. Okay, basically what, what's happened here is we all have our hands placed on the table, but just well, for, uh, just for I, fingers. Actually, I'll tell you what I want to do, and I'm really sorry yeah, about this. Go ahead, Adrian. Rather than interrupt mid-seance, I'm going to take a break now. Okay, you're going to take a quick break. Okay. And I will come okay. straight back to you straight sorry after Sorry about break. that, guys. Okay, okay, I'm really sorry because I don't want to interrupt the, the actual seance itself. So I'll come back to you in just a moment. You're listening to FM 104's phone show. We're broadcasting live from Lep Castle um, in Lep in County Offaly. It's spelled... Uh, sorry, yeah. girls, are you okay there? Yeah, it's just like there's sound outside and Jen just said to me, it sounds like a door, you know, like a a kind of a handle like on a creaky door. But there's actually there's no doors on any of the stairways outside. Like you've been up and down here, Adrian, you know Mm. what, like the doors in and out. There are no physical doors, but it sounded like a creaking door. And, you know, we've kind of gone to the entrance of the room and, and flashed the torch around. There's nothing out there. There's nobody out there and there is no doors. So I don't know what that was. Okay, well, stay there. I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes okay. and see how you're feeling. And by the way, if you want to check out the photographs, we have them up on our website at fm104.ie. You just go to the home page, and then on the uh, flash bar at the top of our website page, you just click on FM 104's Fright Night, and you'll see all of the photographs there. We're getting up as many as we possibly can. Unfortunately, the broadband coverage here is uh, extremely slow, so we're getting as many photographs up as we possibly can. And uh, if you want to uh, pass comment on what you're listening to, you you can text us 53104 together with the O2 money card uh, for 20 cent and we will uh, read out a couple of your texts after the break. We take that quick break now and we'll have the seance from the bloody chapel when the phone show continues. Our journey continues. Do you dare to join us? We're back just after the break. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon. Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. If you want to maximize your return on savings and minimize your costs on credit cards, current accounts and loans, then the banking cost comparisons at nca.ie could be just what you need. Designed to help you compare the costs of different financial products, there's no easier way to keep your outgoings down low and your incomings Banking cost comparisons from the National Consumer Agency, putting consumers first. Thursday. On the girly calendar, it's the most important day of the week. At West Coast Cooler, we'd like to pay homage to Thursday with the opening of the Thursday Club. At stylish venues nationwide, the Thursday Club will be offering beauty treats, spot prizes and a complimentary West Coast Cooler. Plus five lucky Thursday worshippers will win a €200 shopping spree every week. To find out more about participating venues, check out West Coast Cooler on Facebook. Download our iPhone app or text Thursday to 51500. Standard text rate apply. Drink West Coast Cooler sensibly. Visit drinkaware.ie. Be happy. Be healthy. Be inspired. Visit the Mind Body Spirit Festival at the RDS. World class speakers and workshops. Advice, tips, and treatments. The Mind Body Spirit Festival at the RDS. Saturday 29th to Monday 31st of October. It could change your life. Mind bodyspirit.ie I know we've got two separate referendums coming up on October the 27th the same day as the presidential election I know the first referendum is about judges pay and that asks if judges pay can be reduced in line with reductions in the pay of other public servants and I know the second referendum is about whether or not the Dáil and Shannon can investigate individuals and make findings in relation to their conduct when inquiring into matters of public importance Caddy, avocados how much? and I know the price of avocados. Be informed about the two referendums on October 27th. Read the guide or visit referendum2011.ie and be sure to vote. A message from the Referendum Commission. Brace yourself for Dublin's biggest Halloween party. All weekend at Howl of the Moon. Spooktacular fancy dress prizes. Fantastic drinks promotions. Frighteningly fun. Free in all night Thursday, Friday and Sunday. Free till 11.30 Saturday. Reserve your party area now. Call 6345460 or email info at Howl of the moon.ie happy halloween if you love fashion you'll love blanchard's town center's fashion event this bank holiday weekend catwalk shows featuring top models take place this saturday and sunday at 1 p.m 2 p.m 3 p.m and 4 p.m fall in love with this season's latest looks at blanchard's town center's fashion event this bank holiday weekend the FM 104 phone show with QuoteDevil.ie Saving you money on home, car and van insurance FM 104 Can we take this off? The terror, the fear, the unknown Live 
from Lep Castle, the FM 104 phone show Fright Night. We now return to our paranormal investigation. Now, you're very welcome back. Thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight. I've now moved up to uh, the Bloody Castle with the rest of chapel, our, chapel. our Bloody Chapel <laughs> with the rest of our uh, group. Just before we do what we're doing up here, I want to just check on the girls. Are you okay there, girls? Yeah, uh, poor old Jen here is feeling very dizzy. That smell has come back, that incense smell and that heavy feeling, and I just feel yeah. a bit dizzy. A bit dizzy. Mm. That's Adrian's aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It, it's coming back stronger and, and heavier as the time goes on. Like, the more we're kind of... I don't know. Like, we're looking around the place. I don't even know. I don't really know a lot of the history about this room, but it's... it Like, it looks freaky, but it, like... It, it's really hard to explain. I'll just have to take pictures and show you later, but the, the smell is definitely getting stronger and it's kind of where we're sitting. Like, I've moved out towards the doorway and the smell isn't out that way, but it's in the seats where we're sitting and the heaviness is here. Now, you know, I have asked Jen if she wants to leave or anything, just to shout, but... Mm. Well, either of you or both yeah. of you can leave. You don't have to stay yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and your microphone is on at all times, so just uh, let us know if you want to get out and we let you out of there. Okay. okay thank all right. You. Now, as I said, we're in the uh, bloody chapel and it is, this is the only part of the building that's kind of exposed to the elements and that there's wind blowing through the place. Um, it, it's a very calm night. So uh, if we had weather like we had on Monday in here tonight, now it will be, it will be awful. But uh, it's a very calm night. It's cold. I'd say it's about four or five degrees. We're all kind of shivering. Some of us aren't um, geared for this dressed weather tonight. Even though we warned you, dress appropriately. How many... Louise, we were talking about this earlier. How many deaths do you think took place up here? here? Yeah, here. Well, hundreds and hundreds. It's like it's too, uh, too many to count. Like and do you, do you get that feeling? Time. Oh, God, yeah. Feeling you of got death. that even just in that corner over there. Yeah. And Angie, you're going to conduct the sounds. What feeling are you getting at the moment? Well, I'm certainly very aware that there's energies around us. Some of them make me feel quite um, uncomfortable because I feel as though they could they could be quite strong. But there is one in particular that I'm trying to draw closer has a, has a like a, a much more gentle energy, and I feel this this person is actually between the age of about 14 to 16, and he's been hanging around since I came up come up here. So I'm going to ask him to come forward. I feel quite emotional around him, um, and Louise. And yeah, I were emotional talk- because of the way in which he died, or. Yeah. Definitely emotional in, in the way in which he died. It's almost like there is this kind of... It, okay, it seriously, guys. Okay, sorry, sorry. sorry that was anybody out there messing, just please stop. No, we're all up here. We're all up There's here in like, the bloody um, chapel. Uh, oh. Everybody's up here, Jennifer. I just literally said to Jen a couple of minutes ago before Angie started talking there... Um, that like it's like somebody's messing with my hair again. And like there's a really cold feeling after coming in. It's like I'm... Uh, like I was saying earlier like the only way I can describe it is you know when you get that all over body shiver and you kind of say oh somebody's walking over my grave that type of feeling but it's literally there is a noise after happening there's a, the there's like this little um, it's like there's like a little alcove in the wall and the noise came from in there I'm not joking sorry lads yeah and now outside it's like somebody's throwing a stone down but there's nobody there. It's like the stone. Well, everybody is up there. here. Absolutely, but everybody is up here. But there is a stone out there. There's a stone after appearing outside, and it was not there. Well, like I said, you can leave whenever you want, uh, girls. We're not going to force you to stay in there. So yes, no, I want to kind of get to the like. I'm, they're not going to okay, race well, us out. But okay, sit tight. Okay. Sit tight. Now, um, Angie, uh, over to you. Yeah, so as I was saying with this, this young spirit, and I know that Louise and I have just been talking and actually she's feeling the same, is that there's a lot of emotion around him. Um, and it's almost like, yeah, he died here. Um, and the feeling that, that he's given me, it's almost like there's this acceptance, this was it, this was it, and this is all I keep getting. Um, it's the end. You believed, or made to believe it, that there was shame surrounding his yes. death. Yes. Shame, and, shame. and shame in his death. Yes. Okay, well now, let's, let's get this seance going. So we're hoping that he's going to come forward. So I'm just going to move our microphone down towards the table. And what's eerie about this is we're heading towards, <laughs> we're heading towards midnight as well as we do this, uh, as we do this seance. So what, we just place our fingers yeah, on the table. very gently. Come okay. on, sweetheart, come forward and work with us. We don't mean you any harm. We only wish to communicate with us. Let us know that you're with us. Please communicate by moving this table for me, or even wrap on the table, which would be great. If I knock twice, could you knock twice back? 
Did you hear that? I yeah, heard that. Click noise. One, one, one click. Thank you. If I knock twice, could you do it for me? We're only here to communicate with you and we don't mean you any harm whatsoever. And I just want to add also, we're not here to shame anybody. So if I knock twice, could you knock mm. twice back for me? Come on, sweetheart. Can you either move the table for me or knock on the table? Oh, what yeah, was that? Yeah, that was a knock. It was you a got clean. a knock. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. He's coming on this way. Okay. I've had to move. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, Louise has had to move out of the way. Thank you. Can you do that Very again nice. for us? Can you do you that again that for us? Right yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah, I have to get out of his way. Can you do that again for us? Can me, anybody darling? feel vibration in yeah. the table? Yeah. 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 Come on, sweetheart. Okay, guys, oh, seriously. Okay, 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 that's it. We're in here. That's it. Come on. Guys. So are you okay, Jen? No, we're in here. Oh. Oh. What's after. ever happening? We've, there's like a, a black shadow after literally passing in front of the door. Oh, and there's like noise. What is that? There's stones after appearing outside again. Can someone come and get us, please? Okay, can somebody let the girls out of there? That's not a bird up there. Please, that's... It's a bird up there. Yeah, it's a pigeon. Oh, is there? Okay. Sweetheart, could you move this table for me? Come on, Okay. Come on, we don't mean you any harm or any shame. Could you show us that you're with us? Just move the table for us, please. This is Jeremy over here. Can you take it over towards him for me? Oh! Whoa. Oh, the table's moving. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can you do it again? Do it again for me, darling. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the table is actually, Come on, is actually rocking Thank slowly. Thank you very much. Can you do it again for me, sweetheart? And this could not be us. Would everybody agree this could not Sorry, be us moving no. this table? Can Literally, it's it the tips of our fingers. Can you move it over to Jeremy for me? Tilt it over to Jeremy for me. Take it up on two legs and take it over to him for me. Come on, my love. Come okay, on. we have our fingertips on the table now. Come on, sweetheart. The table did start rocking it? gently at one stage. Can you do that for me, darling? Please there we go. Thank you. Can you do it? Everybody again? in agreement that we could not be yeah. rocking this table? No, we're not. We're no, definitely no, not. No. Come on. Oh, thank oh. you, darling. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. We are so grateful. Can you do it? Could you do it stronger? Show us how strong you are. I just described this table where we're all touching our fingers very lightly off it is moving of Come its own free me. will. Come on. Thank you so much. Do you think you can take it over on two legs for us? We are very, very, very impressed and so grateful for what you're doing. Could you do that for me? Well, this table is rocking. Absolutely. Come on. That's it. Come on. Andy, you're a witness to this. Tell us what's happening. I can see it. You can see the legs moving. You can clearly see it moving in the light here. Can you take it? Can you, can you do it stronger for me? That's much Remember, now. we're only That's much we're only here now. to communicate with you. We don't mean you any harm whatsoever, and we're not here to judge or and shame. As you say, Jeremy, it can't be any of us. It couldn't be. No. So, is it you moving the table? No. There's no no possible way no. your fingers can move. Rock that it, shape. rock it harder for us. Show us how strong you are. That's it. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Can you take it up on two legs for me? Take it over on two legs. Would you be able to do that for me? Use the energy around this circle. Use the power in this circle. Love's rocking it. <laughs> the table is it's kind of steadied now. Oh. Louise, Hello. sorry. What word did that come from? That was me. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Can you, do, can you do more for us? Use the energy. Use the power around this circle. Come on, my friend. Come on. We're so grateful. That's it. Uh, there it is, moving again. Thank you so much. Show us what else you can do. Show us how strong you are. Well. And any other spirit that's in this room who's here with us now, please blend your energies together. Please use the energy in this circle. That's really, really strong. Come on, my friend. That's it. Come on. Physically impossible for any of us to, to, no, to do this. Not. Come on, sweetheart. Can you take it over on two legs? It's the pigeons. Oh. There's two pigeons above it. Take it, can you take <laughs> Or move it, can you walk it? This is Louise. Can you take the table to Louise or tilt it over That's to Louise? So can we get some noise on this table, somebody, please? Thank you. Yeah, the table is, is rocking quite, quite wildly it. now. It's picking up nicely now, come on. That's it, That's it. 
Can you keep on doing that for us? Can you do it stronger? We would love it if you took it over there. We would absolutely love it. Could you take it over there for me? Or even move it, come on. Oh, somebody's in a bad mood. <laughs> That's it. Who is this that we're talking to, by the way? Well, I've, I've asked this, this, this young lad to come through. It's a man. Um, yes, yes, it is a male. Um, um, I'm very aware that there are other energies around, so I'm asking them to blend their energies together just to show, to, you know, to, to show us how strong they can be, <clears throat> what they can do. But as we were saying earlier, ghosts don't, um, you know, they don't respond straight away no. and, and spirits, they don't... And if you think of it, neither, neither should they. You know, we don't, we wouldn't like it if someone kept saying, do, do it and do it yeah. now. And, you know, it's always got to be with the utmost what of respect. That? What, what was, was that? that? Can we actually close that door over there just to, please, just so that we're... Okay. Come on. Okay, so we're back to the table. Um, how many hands? One, two, three, four, five... Seven hands just placed on the table by, by fingers. Can you take it over on two legs for us or, or rock it? Do anything. Show us how strong you are. Come on, use us as your, your monkeys. It's Rocking not it the down. other way around. It's not the other way around. Use us as your monkeys. That's it. This is Louise over here. Could you take it to her? Tilt it to her? Wow. Oh, that's grand. I want to try and put the microphone up to the table. I don't know if you'll pick up the creaks. There is a lot of creaks going on. Come on, sweetheart. That's it. Thank you so much. Do you think you can use the energy in this circle? Please use the energy in this circle. Could you take it up on two legs? Take it over to Adrian. We would be so, so pleased. Yeah. Or even if you want to bring it around well, a little bit. For anybody listening, I would probably be the most cynical out of everybody here. But I'm telling you now, this is not us moving this table. No, the table is definitely moving of its own free will. Now, Adrian, you don't believe on, much of this stuff. How can you tell <coughs> this? I can feel the table moving under my fingers, and I'm just very lightly touching the table. It's bizarre. It is. I've, I, this is the first time I've been at one of these. Normally, I sit in the cosy studio, and... That's going to do something. Oh, here we go. Now, it's definitely... It's, it's, uh, it's just moved. Did you feel that move yeah. slightly in the corner? Towards Thank me. you. Can you do that again? This is, this is Jeremy. Can you take it over to Jeremy? Yes, please take it over to me. Take it over to him. That's it. Take wow. it on two legs. Do something. Yeah, look at the energy. Wow, that is that, Well, thank you so much. That's it. Can you start moving this table for me, darling? Wow. Thank you so much. Listen, I'm going to put the microphone up to the table. Come on. Keep on going, my darling. That's it. Keep on going. That's it. Well done. Can you, can you really give it some energy now? Use all the energy in this circle. That's it. Can you take it up on two legs? I know we're asking a lot, but I know that you can do it. Can you do that for us? And then it just stops. Oh, God, I'm strike again. Yeah, they could do. They, they they do this. Okay, Adrian, you're not a believer, or you haven't been. Well, and, and this is my first time to experience uh, this thing with the with. with and with I the know table. there's people. We can't see the text message at the moment. But I'm sure there's people listening. and They're going. They're moving that table with their hands. No, no, no. We only have three fingers on. We've only. It's not possible. It's no, it's absolutely. not. I've been watching, and nobody's been doing anything. No, we just no. all had our hands on the table. Sorry, how are you, Louise? Yeah, I'm just. That guy is still around, and I think he's actually asking for us to give him something. He wants what he couldn't be given when he was alive, and that is forgiveness. Forgiveness, so. Yeah. You both felt that at the same yeah. time? Yeah, because his sadness is so great. And I think the sadness around, you know, in, in this, in this chapel as well. He's never gotten it back. But I think the sadness in this, in, in this yeah, castle as well is that thick. they're asking for forgiveness, but I don't feel a lot of them really should have, because they didn't do anything to, to have to be forgiven for. Not do we, do really we have a, do we have a name for this guy? Or? Under the ruling, yeah. yeah. Do we have a name for this guy, or? Do well, we... I keep getting the name James. I keep getting the name James. For him over there, I was getting Patrick. I'm talking about the young lad. Yeah. So Patrick could possibly be. So I was wondering if, if Louise and I both worked on the table with and asked them to come through. So we'll step back anything. then. What yeah. Do you think? Okay. Yeah. Could we I just ask try, before? I mean, sorry, well so could I just ask before we go any further? I thought I'd run a mile if I experienced something like this, but I'm very, very relaxed here mm -hmm. with this. So I don't feel any. It is quite relaxing, negative. actually. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's know? not threatening. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm standing there with my hand on the table, and I feel perfectly fine. But it's like you're witnessing it. You're not being pulled. Do, do you know what I mean? So you're experiencing it. In a way, enjoying it. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see. So we, we're backing away from the table for. A... Maybe you never know. Okay, we're backing away from the table for a moment. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Come on, Patrick. Come on, James. Come on forward. You're very welcome. We ask 
that you communicate with Louise and I through moving this table. Please show us what you can do. Communicate with us by doing it. Or if I bang twice on the table, can you bang back? Let us hear you, let us know. And that's almost because we've changed the energy. Forgive me. <laughs> yeah. Come on, James. Come on. Okay, there's another male coming in. Mm -hmm. um, very Irish name. Rory, but it's spelt differently, so I think it was pronounced differently. Okay. He's older. Yeah. He's he a lot of marks on his face. Yeah, like he feels very marks. much like a protector. Oh, can you hear the table? Mm. Thank you. Can you do that again? That's a tapping on the table, all right? Yeah. If I bang I twice... It's coming underneath, though. Yep. If I bang twice, can you bang back? Thank you. Was that the table? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It certainly wasn't me. Can you finish this off for me? It's very faint. Very faint, yeah. yeah. If I do it again, could you do it louder, please? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. definitely... It's possible when you go back over the audio later that you may hear. Yeah. Could you do something else? Louise and I is very, very happy to communicate with you. And as I said earlier, we don't mean you any harm. Can you, can you move the table? Can you take it towards Louise? Take it, oh, can you hear that? Yeah. Take it over to Louise, please. We would be so grateful. Yeah, the wind is starting to pick up. That's not wind. Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's wind coming from behind there. Yeah. That, was a, that was a car. Though. No, but you can actually feel the wind yeah. coming through. It's very, very windy. Can you take it over to Louise for me, my darling? Seems I can be, feel it. Um, you feel, do you, it doesn't have a lot of energy, though. I wonder if we should put some more on then. Yeah. Come, if, if, if everyone your can side. come back. Everyone comes back. Okay, we'll give this one last try. He, he seems to be kind of... His energy is weaker than the other guy. I, and let me ask you, Angie, can it be a case that that you can feel the spirit here and the spirit just doesn't couldn't be bothered, yeah. just doesn't Sometimes want to play ball? Sometimes they don't want to do that. Sometimes, you Same know. Same as people. Yeah. yeah. Moving now, actually. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Can you keep on going, my friend? Keep on going. Well, That's it. Know. Keep on going. That's it. Use all the power, all the energy in this circle. Well. And do what you want well. to do. Do what you want to do. It's getting stronger. Can you keep going, darling? You can hear the table creak, and I don't know if the listeners can hear that in the background, but the table is... That's it. Thank you so much. Now it's shaking. Do what yeah. you want to do. Do what you want to do. That's it. Whoa. Can you now the table is shaking quite wildly. That's is that, it. Is anybody doing that here? No, well, I'm certainly well, it's not. No. not me, because my hand's no. above it. <laughs> Louise, your hands aren't even not barely on it. She, hers is barely on it, yeah. There's nobody really touch it like that way. No. Has anybody gone really Thank cold? you. Can you do it again? suddenly gone freezing. Mm -hmm. It has gone freezing, again? yeah. Show us how strong you are. Come on. Thank you very much. Actually, Lauren, can you get this on video to put up tomorrow? If possible? Can you yeah, take... That's it, that's, oh, it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Keep on going, keep on going. Thank you so much. Could you, I, could, could you take it on two legs? Would you be prepared to do that for me? Take it up on two legs. No. <laughs> Maybe thinking about anything. it. It's like as if he, he goes on strike. It yeah. does, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not telling you to do it. Honestly, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm asking because oh. we would be so privileged if you would do that. Please believe me, this is not a command or anything. I'm not expecting it. I'm asking. Could you take it up on two legs? Walk it. Anything you want to do. Okay, now it's shaking violently again. That's crazy. Tell you, I've seen it go violently before, Jerry. That's it. Can you take it? Can you, that's it. That's it. Keep well, you can coming. actually hear the table, I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen. The table is quite clearly moving on the floor. Two legs are leaving the ground. Two legs are leaving yeah. the ground. Thank you very much. We are very, very grateful. Wow. That's it. Well done. Oh Thank you. God. That's wow. it. Keep going. Keep going, my friend. Keep going. It's actually really, really bouncing off, now, off the floor. Yeah. Wow. That's it. 
We are so impressed. Thank you so much. Wow. Now, I, I know for a fact that, Angie, your hands yeah. weren't even on at that stage. Louise, your hands were barely on it. Sue's hands were just touching it, as were mine and Andy's. Adrian, were you hey, rocking Adrian, that table? No, I wasn't rocking that Adrian, table, no. Adrian and I made eye contact yeah, at the yeah. same time, and we were both as stunned as each other. There's no That's, pressure on it. No, no, pressure. no, no, no. whatsoever, no. I mean, my hands, look, there's my fingers there like that, look. And it's well lit up around. I mean, you know, you've got, you've got the torches around. Actually, from where I was, you could see that your hands were sliding because there wasn't mm. any force in the touch at all. That's, right. That's amazing. That's amazing. This is the same table that in, uh, I think it was Wicklow Jail, that we had something moving on it, wasn't it, as well? What yeah, a planchette. We had a planchette. We were communicating with spirit for That's a planchette. That's obviously another way That's to right. do it. Yes, isn't it? that is. That is. That's another way to do it as that well. Is, that is bizarre. There's no way that the table could have rocked like that. Um, okay, well, we're going to have to take a very quick break and then we're all going to head uh, back downstairs for our final wrap-up and um, read some of your texts. Let's find out what our listeners uh, felt of uh, tonight's show. So we'll take a quick break live from Lep Castle in County Offaly. This is FM 104's Phone Show. Sit tight. Our paranormal investigation continues just after the break. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night from Lep Castle with Howl at the Moon, Dublin's biggest Halloween party this October bank holiday weekend. Death, murder, ghosts, and the unknown. We're live from Lep Castle, the most haunted castle in Europe. The FM 104 phone show Fright Night. Night. Now you're very welcome back. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. This is FM 104's phone show with Adrian Kennedy broadcasting uh, live from Lep Castle in County Offaly. Let me read out um, some of your... That was a bizarre experience, by the way, that uh, table moving. This is the first time I've ever experienced that for myself. Um, a couple of your texts. I heard a wailing sound outside when uh, one of the girls left... Or, sorry, felt a, a shadow presence, says uh, Luke. Um, my boyfriend uh, saw a ghost of an adult man in my bedroom and I'm lying in bed listening to you. Uh, now I'm absolutely, you know, whating it. Um, Adrian, if you can't hear the noises, there is definitely a whispering something in an angry tone and high-pitched screams are freaking out my dog. Great show tonight. I heard uh, a lot tonight. A girl's voice, a whispering, moaning noise and stones being thrown uh, this is your best Halloween show yet. Thank you very much indeed for um, for that text. Now, let me go back to uh, Jeremy, who's still, <coughs> excuse me, upstairs in the bloody chapel. Yeah, I'm up here in the bloody chapel. And what we've done uh, now for our last uh, uh, paranormal experiment is we have taken the planchette and placed it on the table. Now, what's a planchette? It's a uh, like a tear-shaped piece of wood um, that gets placed on the table. Now, if you remember back to our paranormal show in Wicklow, in Wicklow Jail, we had it moving around the table. Um, so this is basically a tear-shaped uh, piece of wood which is placed on the table. We all place our fingers on this uh, planchette. And again, just before, ju just during the outbreak, I was talking to Angie about it. And like with everything, it may happen or it may not happen, but um, fingers crossed. So over, over to you, Angie, in your own time. Okay. okay, James, I want you to come forward. I'm Patrick, and any other spirit that's here in this room with us now, blend your energies, come forward and start moving this piece of wood that's on the table for us, please. Can you start moving this piece of wood, please? We would be so grateful. Come on, my friends, please use the energy in this circle. Use the energy. Can you start bringing it over to me over here for me, please? Come on, thank you very, Whoa. very much. Thank you. Look at that, that is amazing. Thank you so very much. Could you please bring that over? I want you to bring it right over the edge of the table for me, my love. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Keep your fingers on it. It's moving right across the table. Do you think you could move this along the edge of the table for me? Take it right around the table. Use the energy around this circle. Use the energy. Thank Our fingers are just placed on this, so there's no way we could be moving it. You would know. Oh. Right wow. Right round for me. It didn't even fall off. It's, it's hanging over the edge of the table. Take it right round. Take it right round. Oh my god, the way it turned. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is freaky. This is freaky stuff. Can We're all following this now. Just slightly more for me. Can you tilt oh. it over just slightly more for me? 
Um, oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Bring it over to me, my friend. Bring it over to me. That's it. That's it. That's it. Can you just tilt it over slightly more? Bring it down. Bring it down. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. How is it doing that? Now, I'm going to touch mm. this plant check just for a moment because, as you know, I haven't had my hands on this wood at all. I'm going to lift it up now and I'm going to ask Spirit, please, could you move this piece of wood round this table so very far? Show, show everybody how strong you are, please. Okay, so Take it around. That's it. No, show us. I don't know if you can you hear this, Adrian. We are so grateful. Can you take it to a point where it's very hard for them to even have their finger hovering over? Nobody's moving this, correct? No, no. I actually have not. Just not a Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take it oh, oh. Oh. Thank you. Oh. That's like it. Oh. It's so weird. It's such. Agent, I don't know if you picked that up. I, I can hear. I can hear it perfectly. Describe to me what exactly that that was spinning. Honey, it's moving again. It's moving again. It's moving again. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Keep going for me, my friend. Keep going. Thank you so much. Like it's like an old pointer, please. It's it keeps changing it, direction. Yeah, no, it's not pointing at anyone in specifically. It's just it's, it's just using the energy because we've asked. How fast can we get it to move as to this? Fast they want to as fast as it's for them to decide okay please okay, move this please show us what you can do please show us what you can do i'm going to put the microphone down to it agent move it a bit faster please faster can you take it so far oh. Oh. can you take it so fast it flies off the table for me my darling please oh. it's actually making a, a, a mark on the table Wow. Now, sorry, let me just go to Andy with this. I lost grip that time. It was going so fast, I lost grip that time. And the last time it was going fast, I also lost grip as well. And you're right, it seemed to be coming over towards me. Um, is it possible, is it possible uh, Andy, to ask a question and to make it to move? Is that By possible? all means, yes. Okay. So maybe we can get a bit of information uh, using because... back on there again. Again, Adrian, just to describe what's happening for the listeners at home, we've now placed the planchette on top of the table. It's a piece of wood, tear-shaped, uh, about six inches um, in size. We all have our fingers just placed on it. What I'd be right in saying to everybody here, there's no way we could have moved it at that speed using our own, our own fingers. Because even if somebody wanted to, like, no, not all of us are in the same mind to have to go the same direction. Like, that's something... No, it's, just, it's physically impossible. It's physically impossible. Okay. And you were looking very anxious there a few seconds ago, as if something was going through your head. No, I'm not anxious at all. I don't feel anxious at all. I just, you know, I'm, I'm very... The rest aware. of us do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very aware that the energy that's, you know, working with us is friendly, is showing us what he can do. And I'm not worried. I'm not scared. You were concentrating on something there for a second, and I saw... Kind of staying with spirit at the moment, and I'm, I'm, I'm working with them, because obviously I know that you, you're going to want to ask questions. You said that you got, like, you felt somebody feeling you just before we started this. Are they still there? Right. Yes, yes. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> my hands are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody touched the back of my leg. Not oh, that, was, that was Pat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what sort of questions uh, can we ask? him if he died here you know be, okay. be you know i mean one thing to be, you know always with respect always with respect okay, okay. so just very gently we, what would like to okay so let's all place our things can we get some light back on this please I just there want we. To confirm um Spirit, are you still with us if you are can you please move the wood for us that's on the table straight away straight away so did anybody hear that no uh, that's not He's just moving it. Okay. Did anybody hear that? No. Jeremy? No. Didn't a, hear a, a child? No, we, we, we didn't hear a thing. The only thing I'm hearing is the, is the wood. The only thing I'm hearing is your mobile phone interfering with your microphone. Spirit, did you die here? Did you die here, my friend? If you did, can you move the wood for us? Move the wood to confirm. No. No? Okay. So they didn't die here. No? Keep, keep asking the questions. Any questions that you want to ask? Jeremy, can you move your mobile phone away there? Yeah, sure. Anybody got a question? Like, is it an old fella or a young fella? Or... It was you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's obviously not James. What I've got is um, a, a, um, someone of around about middle age. Does he want us here? I could ask him. Do you want us here? Move the wood if it's, if it's a yes. Are you happy that we're here? Move the wood if it's a yes. Are you annoyed that we're here? Uh, okay, so what I'm getting very strong sense of doesn't want to be asked any questions. Remember that shaming that has gone on in the past. Okay, so no question. More about what they want to do. Okay, well let's see if we can if we can get it off the table again. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, Spirit. Thank you very much. For, for it's the last did. time thing we will ask of you. Was there a tap? Fingers on it, but there was a tap like, a, like okay. the tap when you knocked the last iron tap back. That's exactly what it says. Could you tap the wood for us instead of move the wood? Could you actually do that for us? Oh, that is tapping. Oh my god! Yes. Oh. What was oh that? God. Yeah, I definitely heard that. <laughs> what was that? Now, where was that coming from? I don't. Where, Angie? Where did that tap come from? The table? Uh, yeah, it's from the the, the planchette. Planchette. Underneath the planchette. Okay, so we Thank get the. Thank you. Can we, you do that again for me? Can you do it louder? Come on, my friend. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, what was? Thank you so much. Thank you. Could you do it loud so that everybody can hear? That wasn't anyone kicking the table. Did anyone kick the table? Okay. 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 Thank you so very much. Could you start moving it for us again? Okay, Adrian, we're going to get the planchette moving again. This is the last experiment. Okay, it's starting to move. So I'm going to put the mic down on the table. Show us what you can do, my friend. Again, just to reiterate, this could not be any of us moving this planchette. Our fingers are literally placed on it. Wow. Send it off the table for us, my friend. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you, thank you very much. That was um, very good. Your table? Wow. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's actually now a circular. We get that photograph if we can, please, Lauren, up on up on the FM104 website. The table, when it came up here, Adrian, as you saw yourself, was mm. uh, it was worn down, but there was no marks on it. There's now a very distinct circle. Um, after after wearing away on the table? After wearing away on the table. Wow. And again, there is no way um, even five people with their fingers placed on it could create that, that amount of, uh, amount of uh, wear and tear. Well, that's brilliant. Um, I want to just read a, a couple of texts. I, I mentioned to you a couple of minutes ago about a child. Um, a lot of people have texted in. Did you hear that little child about a minute ago? I definitely heard a sound of a child, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, what else? Uh, I would... It would do, 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 do. A very good show... Um, can anybody visit?